those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Yeah, welcome to the uh, Sixth Borough Radio Show, brought to you by uh, Power Up Radio. Joe and Denise uh, here to talk all about the Florida's do's and don'ts uh, that take place every day in the streets of New York. So get ready to ride the A train. Next stop, uh, Boca Raton. So uh, what do you say we get the show started? Hello, everyone. Happy Memorial Day weekend and welcome to the Sixth Borough. <laughs> and tonight we have some great guests, great lineup. And, you know, not only the guests, they're all personal friends of mine. I know. They're really part of the borough. Yes, they are. And um, I have another special guest here tonight, a very special guest. I brought, I brought Mama. She's in the audience. Hey, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> Mama's in the house. <laughs> yeah. She was happy I asked her. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to introduce our first guest, Mr. David Morrison, owner of R&D Promo and Sourcing and Safety Works, and also Gator Straws. And I'm going to turn it over to the boss, Denise, because she asks all the questions here. I do ask all the questions. Thanks, Joe. Um, Like you said, everyone, welcome to the Sixth Borough. This is the first half of our show. And for those of you that are wanting to listen in through the radio, it's 96.9, 95.3, and 1470 AM. And you also can call in to us. It's 888 565-1470. Um, You can also make comment if you want to see us live. Now, I have my Facebook Live running, but you can also see us as the full screen. Whoever is a guest on our show, you can go on to Facebook, Power Up Radio TV, and you can see the live stream from there. And comment on that, and we'll actually see it. We'll actually see it. Oh, my God, technology. You should have seen us earlier. It was like two idiots trying to help each other. But with that said, again, welcome to the Sixth Borough. We have with us Dave Morrison, (laughs) and we have a lot more with us. We have also... Women will be the first in their family to graduate college. It all Me. starts with teachers who meet challenges with creativity, who reinvent education for the future, who work towards a school system that lifts up every child, regardless of race, income, or zip code, and who enable the full potential of our students, our communities, and our country. Explore a career that leaves a legacy you can be proud of. Shape the future. Teach. Learn more and receive free support at teach.org. Our first person that's ever here from this line of business. Thank yes. you so much for being here. No, I love being here. Thank you. For those of you that can't it. see that are listening, Dave actually bought us presents. I'm one of those. Uh, one of my love languages is to receive gifts. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and it could be anything. The charger but, came in handy. But yeah. the charger came in handy. You've got yeah. great stuff here. And um, I know, let's tell a little bit about how you started with the business and um, let's tell everyone who you are. All right. Uh, we run uh, two separate companies. One's promotional products and that's RD promo and sourcing where we source kind of anything for fortune 500 businesses or business to business things that have your logo on it. Um, so anything like what we showed you here, really good business. Um, you know, we deal with great companies that want to promote their company. So, uh, it's been really good. I actually worked for a liquor company for 25 years. Wow. And then, you know, retired from that and then got into this business because there was so much on the liquor side that does promotional products. And that's how I met Dave. Yep. Through the liquor business. Yes. The liquor business, (laughs) huh? Mm-hmm. We had uh, anything fall off the truck. Yeah, we had. Uh, <laughs> we were selling at that time a jalapeno flavored tequila. Oh yeah, you gave me plenty of cases that like? of that. It was good, and it was a couple years of Joe and I <laughs> in his limo selling jalapeno tequila. Yeah. Oh goodness! When we weren't drinking it. I mean, yeah. honestly, was it actually spicy? Yeah, so it's actually mm-hmm. really good. We're still. My wife and I own a two a small percentage of the company that's still going. But um, so they actually take um, silver tequila and they take jalapenos in Mexico and they put the jalapenos in. um, It sits in the tequila for about six months. And it's actually it's actually very good. It's really good. It's It's all natural. No, Mm -hmm. a lot of the tequilas out there have chemical flavors. This one didn't. But well, those that are listening, if anyone wanted to buy it, what's where can they go to buy it? It should be anywhere. It's called Tenteo. And uh, jalapeno okay. tequila, it's actually amazing. And uh, so try it out. 
All right. Um, but I don't know if you know, margarita is the number one song cocktail in the world. Of course. Jalapeno margarita. There There's a go. long story <laughs> of debate about the margarita. Exactly. Where did it actually originate? Here we go with the research. <laughs> I'm the research one here. Exactly. Yeah, I'm not the boss. I'm just the leader. <laughs> yeah. Leader like of it. the group. But going back to where you are, you actually bought us some stuff uh -huh. that represents what your company can do. Mm -hmm. So we have promotional stuff that actually can represent a company, their marketing materials, um, things that could be handed out um, just for the like tokens, right? Yep. Pretty much. People, yeah, anything not really to sell. It's more for... It's amazing. Pens are our number one seller. Everybody still uses pens. Gives Everybody's pens, like, oh, yeah. nobody wants a pen anymore. Everybody still writes. We do about 25 million pens a year sell. Um, but <laughs> our, the companies don't sell them. They're all giveaways. They give them out. Oh, but so, look at this. How This yeah. is really interesting. Now, they actually put yeah, the, so now the barcode. The biggest thing is the QR code. The QR code. So you can scan it, and it takes you to the company's website. That's brilliant. So, yeah. I love so, that. We need to get some promotion. for the six borough. Yep. We really need to do that. Joe, at work tomorrow, we're ordering. We'll get him. Yep. <laughs> tomorrow, Saturday. <laughs> You're coming in, aren't I'll you? I'll be there. <laughs> and you also bought us another gift, right? So this yeah. was actually super special. Yeah, this is. Uh, I thought that was chocolate. This is still big. Um, I thought it was chocolate, too. <laughs> yeah, so this has a notepad. But the biggest thing is nowadays, um, new technology. It used to be an Android and an iPhone. You couldn't use the same charger. Okay. Um, that's just a cover. So nowadays, oh. the char the Android and the iPhone can charge off the same uh, charger. Well, look at that. So um, very good. You need charged. You need yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> this is brilliant. I love it. So I if you throw cover. it in your purse, it does about five or six phone charges. So you always have it. Oh, really? Yeah. So it gives you like seven, eight hours worth of charging? Um, yeah, it'll open well, probably more than that. If you probably full charge, to, yeah, maybe seven. Right. And this is this is all you know, great stuff to give your clients yeah. if you're a business. They're right. gonna exactly. they're gonna remember you. Of course, you. of course. I mean, the charger is really good for those that are listening and not seeing it, what we're looking at. So um, Dave here actually bought in some of his promotional items, and we're looking right now at a charger which can go in the purse and has like a little loop for a pen. But this is just an example yeah. of some of the things. This is like one of, I don't know yeah. how many other items that there could be, right? 225,000 on our website. 225,000 items? Yep. So this is your book. Look, you need a better book than that. I need that. a better Come book on. than that. Look at that. Oh, he's, look, he's hooking me up. You don't mind yes. he's giving me all this stuff. Yeah. His wife is in the audience. <laughs> So this is really great. I could We're always live. use a book. I yeah. love books like this. Freddie, look, we have a book. Yeah. <laughs> Freddie has a book. I gave him one too. Put the numbers. Freddie got one too. <laughs> Put the numbers in there. Uh, yeah. He's in the winning. Okay. Good job. The yes. winning numbers are in there. Exactly. Don't let it. Don't so let that get out. The six borough actually now has been received. We received our first gift. All right. I love Yay. that. Thank you yeah. so much. But nice. this is just the beginning. So just to recap. Just the beginning. Yes. Um, once again, the promotional items. They can go and the website that they would go to rdpromo.com easy enough rdpromo.com nice and easy. for those of you that are listening out there um lock it in rdpromo.com like it and um there are things that they can order for the businesses um, can 100%. schools also take advantage of this yes we do huge business schools my kids go to catholic school we do all their stuff schools actually like a Catholic school probably spends a hundred grand a year on the kids on different things from here. So does the schools, archdiocese know that he does. Is the six <laughs> barrel? Is the, the six I barrel in there somewhere? I have to donate two hundred thousand, but at least they buy oh, hundred thousand. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's reverse there. Exactly. Um, well, I appreciate you sharing, yeah, and I no, think that there's time. also another side of your business yes, the, that I want to know more about. Yeah, so during, um, we've always done business with some big clients um, with the promo side, which would be Office Depot and uh, Home Depot. Um, and during the pandemic, we got into the hand sanitizer business, obviously, like everybody. We were a little bit successful, more successful than other people. But it kind of branched into a good relationship we've had with both companies, and we found a new product. Um, it's called HOCL. And HOCL has been a research on that. Yep, mm -hmm. has been around since World War One. They used mm -hmm. to use it in the front lines because mm -hmm. they couldn't get uh, disinfectants and things for the human body um, up there. So they used to make it, but it would only last a day. So now we have a patented method that it's shelf stable for one year. And HOCL is actually now an EPA disinfectant. Kills mm. COVID in under a minute. Um, kills a list of crazy bacteria better than any other disinfectant. Hold on there. You said it kills anything? 
almost anything in the sixth bacteria. World, that'd be very useful. Ninety-nine percent. Ninety-nine. Very useful. Ninety-nine point nine nine. Very useful for the sixth barrel. Exactly. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I love that. So this is like a bottle. EPA. Man. You would you would use this. It's like a tester bottle mm -hmm. um, to show people. You could spray, but you know what? Because during the pandemic, hospitals, all these people, you sanitize ten times a day, but you use bleach, you use all these chemicals. Start now sick. you're sick. So what they came out with finally in October, we came out with this. So the good thing about this is, you can drink it. Okay, hold on. So <laughs> for those that are right now listening, you can drink it. So there we <laughs> can I have a shot of that. <laughs> <laughs> Clean you right out, Joe. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> actually taken this product okay oh, it kills Safe. everything in the six barrel but so it's human friendly yeah, Who so here's it? so here's why you can do it the catch is so what this is is in your body your white blood cells when you get a um, bacteria in your body anything your white blood cells release hocl which is called hypochlorous acid that's what kills everything in your blood so it's taken them about 100 years to figure out how to mimic oh. what your body does. <laughs> and now this is um, the product that is your white, exactly same pH, same everything that your body makes. And this has saved countless children's lives. So we sell this across the country. Schools is our huge. So about oh. 2,200 children die a year across the U.S. from drinking school chemicals. So a lot of stools buy this. A baby could drink a gallon of this and just get dehydrated because so it's just to be at clear, the end of the day it's salt water. Oh, 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 at the end of the day it's salt water. It's a, so what it is is electrolyzed salt water. So your body oh. electrolyzes salt and blood. If I have a body. hangover with this work. It'll clean out. It. It'll help it out. <laughs> <Could you>? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so it says yeah. that it's zero percent alcohol and bleach, and yeah. I, I really appreciate this only yeah. because those sanitation wipes that you can get right from the store, I'm allergic to them. Yep. Believe it or not. And it actually dries out my cuticles and my hands. Yep. And so this would be, I can just clean the counters, the door handles, and everything with that. So for that, we have oh, this is different. that exact same product, right? No okay. different. Marketing, whatever. That's so this stuff. is a skin spray, or hospitals use this for wound care now. So hydrogen peroxide that they've used yeah. for years. So they've proven that when you have a cut, a big gash, that when they put hydrogen peroxide, it actually causes scarring because the skin curls. So this does not cause the bubbling and all that. Oh. And this heals. So your body is releasing right. um, HOCL hypochlorous acid to clean. This basically helps your body and it heals. Joe's a perfect example. I use it on my tattoos. He, people use this on tattoos. He did one. It, it speeds up the healing Yeah, process. he did one. We did a test with him. Week. He did one with the hypochlorous acid and one yeah. with some alcohol and whatever else. Mm -hmm. And almost five times faster. Yeah, his and it doesn't itch. Healed. It's bad. Yeah. I do have to ask, I mean, is this your product? Did you create this? So I did we Yeah, we have um, a chemist, a company that... Um, all they do is chemistry. So we're contracted with them. We're the sales guys. They have all the chemistry. Wow, you know, okay. these chemists don't know how to sell anything. They have an incredible product, mm -hmm. but then they're like, all right, what do I do? How do I get it anywhere and right. get it out? So that's what our job, we're the master distributor of these chemicals. So if in the United States, if you want to buy these, you come to us. So again, so. in recap, for our listeners out there, the first product was called the Briotech, Bri yep. Briotech Bri sanitizer and disinfectant. It kills 99.99, percent point nine nine. Ninety nine point ninety nine percent of yep. viruses and bacteria. But hold on, listen to this. <laughs> it kills viruses and bacteria, including feline, whatever that word is. <laughs> That's coronavirus. Oh, okay. So they don't have enough coronavirus the in the world show. to test okay. this. So they, the feline corona has been around. It's an exact replica. So any bottles you read it's really the test is done on the feline corona. oh okay so that's more epa really all right and then it um <laughs> Asher Asheritria coli simonella coli, listeria yep. meth chillin resistant gi okay uh, oh and then staphylococcus <laughs> yep. that's kills it strep throat yep. and then um pneumonia so <laughs> listen to me this like where i come from we use vix exactly for everything yeah and Windex. Yep. So it, it sounds like out. it's a combination of Vicks and Windex. Totally. But Except legitimate. You can, this is how it yeah, works. It all won't in one. Hurt you. <laughs> I love this. This is really Why don't great. Why you try a shot? I'm yeah. good. Try. <laughs> try a shot. So this is so actually the you try. You I've done yeah, it. The skincare, which this is the same thing, but this is called pure hypochlorous. 
So eye doctors, across the country, we saw a huge amount of eye doctors. Now, instead of saline, straight saline, to put your contacts in, every eye doctor, when you go in, he sprays his hands with hypochlorous acid, and then they put your contact in. And that, that hypochlorous acid will also clear out any kind of grime in your eye or any bacteria. So it's a huge thing now in the eye doctors. If you ever go to an eye doctor and say, hey, do you have any hypochlorous acid? Every office will have it. Yeah. Yeah, this is so, amazing. Yeah. What a great product. Freddie, what a great product line. <laughs> right? This yeah, is like so, great. I'm loving this. And it's... <laughs> it's it's and can it's you, can you also do it with these yeah, two? hundred percent. It's oh, all the oh, same. Baby. At the end yeah, of the yeah, day, you enough for You got to drive all home. the same no, product. No. <laughs> you got to drive in your oh, eyes. Oh, I can do that. No, 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 look, awesome at your look at Freddie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's. Does it take any bacteria in your eyes out? Yeah, yeah cleans your right, anything with that. Go, Freddie. Go. We Freddy's got, in. We got, we got him. The yeah. producer, Freddy, the producer is in. He's yes. going to be spraying. Freddy, Freddy. Oh, okay. <laughs> help you out. So he You're just in. sprayed his eyes yes. with one of these And now he can products. see better. <laughs> He's Look, looking a little woozy. <laughs> let, me, let me try something. Maybe I can see the monitor. <laughs> exactly. He's in. He's in. There you go. <laughs> I can see. No, it's, it's okay. basically... <laughs> okay. Exactly what your <laughs> body makes. Look, it gets it's in there. It's been healed. This is awesome. So that's stuff. why it's really good, Ooh, it's especially in schools, because kids yeah. look at the records. Kids mm -hmm. drink chemicals at school all the time. With this, they can drink it and nothing happens. Great it, replacement for body, you right. know if you're concerned about solutions that are you know poisonous and dangerous to children. This is a yeah. great. Yeah. And if especially they reach for it, you're good. You're fine. Nowadays, everywhere you go, I know coronavirus is kind of coming down, but still, I mean, schools, hospitals, yes, they, they, they are disinfecting 10 to 12 times yeah. a day. This and is our great. kids are breathing this stuff. And it don't smell either. Yeah, and these chemicals, yeah. no you know, what it. COVID, I think, did to our kids in breathing all the disinfectants and everything that they've done now i mean there's in five or six years there's going to be problems and that's yeah. where this product now just children yeah everybody <laughs> i won't count us but yes there, there's um, still time for them i don't exactly. know about those of us that yeah. are now because schools is important because schools are like germ plates oh yeah. yes they are oh it gets exactly. worse than that exactly they get in yeah, potato, they our, get all kinds of crazy now, things. Now, yeah. our kids walk in the house and uh, my wife just sprays them down with uh, HSCL <laughs> before they come in. <laughs> now we have a hose in the front with HSCL before they come in. <laughs> You guests come in the house, you spray people yeah. down. Nobody's allowed without spray getting the spray missed, down. Missed them. <laughs> It's a good well, idea, actually. Yeah. It is a very good idea all yeah. across the board for its purposes. And thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. This is great stuff. So once yeah. again, for those of you who are listening, this is called Safety Works. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to call in and have a, a question just to ask of Dave, it's 888-565-1470. Um, you can go ahead and just simply ask any question, um, even if we're further into the segment. But at this mm -hmm. point in time, this is great, great yeah. information. But we have something else as well. Yes, we do. We have so, 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 something so far. I want to specialize. I want to lead into this. Right. Okay, yeah. you lead in. <clears throat> this is you guys, Joe, Joe's baby. <laughs> you guys um, ever go to like McDonald's and order a shake, and they have those paper straws? Anybody? You guys have all I'm experienced the, the, wor the worst ever. <laughs> what is the worst feeling when that thing deteriorates and you go to drink the shake and it goes all over you? These straws, not because you know I'm I'm oh. promoting them. These straws here. You take they're, them out of the bag and just put a bunch in. Better than regular straws. They're stronger than regular straws. And Dave, tell us how they're made. Like so these what, are the agave yeah, ones, right? Yeah. So what we've done with yeah. our paper straws, which uh, is what Joe is talking about. So, you know, you end up with a wet noodle in about a minute on a regular paper straw. And it's, it's, so it's what we did, we figured out that um, the problem with that was it was a flour binder. So basically you took paper, you put flour in the middle, just like paper mache. And when you put flour in water, it immediately disintegrates. Just chemistry. What happened, yeah. So what we did is we made it instead of flour, we made a rice binder. So uh, rice oh, is wow. like sushi rice. So when sushi rice gets wet, it becomes super sticky. So right. our straws are rice, and when you put it in water, 
it immediately becomes sticky and the paper stays together. So, um, you know, does we, it matter what color they are? They're no, so these, the other? yep, nope, all uh, they're There's natural and stuff. And some of these, these straws right here, some of these are agave straws. So, um, oh, wow. like what you have there this one? is, yep, so this is made of what's left over from making tequila. Oh, so this is a this? second. So we have paper and we have agave. Yep. What? You get drunk on the straw. Yep. You, oh, you can get drunk on the straw? And you just suck on it for a little bit. <laughs> but so Family we have show. two types. We do paper straws <laughs> and then Joe, you need you need one. You need a black one. <laughs> <laughs> um, this guy's too, he's a funny guy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I've used these before. Yeah. So this is great. I gotta this tell is you. made over. So I don't know if you know, you know, what tequila is made out of all agave. Yeah, I do. So yeah. basically, what's left over is kind of like the rind of a coconut. Right. So Mexico's had so many problems with they can't get rid of them. So now they grind them and they make straws out of them. Drink my protein shakes yeah. with these. Great. How and these, industrious. Instead of plastic, plastic lasts 50 years. These disintegrate in six weeks. So right. environmentally friendly. Mm -hmm. Just like our, our products here for mm -hmm. sanitizing and, and skin care and all that. This is amazing. So they're reusable. Oh. These, yes, you can reuse the paper. You probably get six hours out of our paper. Um, but these are almost like plastic straws what? because these will last in water probably four or five days. It's, it's true, though. Oh, wow. Everyone's going to have to switch. So paper, plastic straws are going away. Yeah, plastic, just so you know, it's not, you know, everybody's like, oh, they banned plastic straws. It's going to happen, the government. What the government's doing is they followed what California did. So I don't know if anybody... In, uh, straws and plastic bags are made out of a certain plastic that nothing else is made out of. It's called plastic number five. Plastic number five is not recyclable. Yeah, it it's forever. more expensive to buy recycled plastic number five than it is to make new. So it's un unrecyclable. So every city um, or state facility where you take um, recycled products, they take out all the plastic number five. And then they put it on a boat and they send it to China and they charge the city whatever it is on that to go. So Boca Raton pays about $4 million a year to get rid of plastic number four. Oh. Deerfield Beach was paying about $8 million. So Deerfield Beach wow. banned plastic straws. They paid 500000 last year. So California did that. Everybody kind of follow, following. California saved probably $400 million. I don't have the exact statistics, but a huge amount of money because they used to have to collect all the number five plastic right. and send it overseas because there's nowhere to store it here. Well, i got to tell you, I really thought it was all because of the turtles. Yep. That's what... Uh, it's got a lot to do with it. And that's what everybody wildlife. thinks, and that is. But the truth of the matter is just we tell people because they are banning and people get mad at the cities, like, what are you right, doing? Right, right. But it's more for money because these cities are paying yeah. huge amounts of money. Well, it's saving taxpayer yeah. money. Exactly. Right. And the yes, yeah. these, so these, the agave, it's about six, seven weeks in the ocean. Huh? Are they edible? Uh, you could eat them, yeah. yeah. It's just we're, uh, we're drinking lime. the products. Why don't you yeah. eat the straws? <laughs> <laughs> no? Do you know drinking beer in the day? I was telling you, we yeah. used to drink it out of a straw. Yeah. This would be fantastic. For that yeah. contest, we exactly. Yeah. I'll talk to Dave like about it. that. He'll, yeah. be, he'll be all in on yeah. that. So, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> so in recap, um, these straws are really environmentally friendly. They yep. last longer than the paper straws. I have fights with the paper straws. Yes. Um, yeah, I actually started good to, to make get paper balls. Uh, yeah, yeah, good spitball experience, yeah. too, with this. Um, but I have to say that um, with what I've had the experience, I've actually been carrying my own straws, which come mm -hmm. either in metal or yeah. something else other, but this yeah. is really good. What are you good. using I mean, a metal straw for? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are really good for that. Uh, I brought the I thick got ones. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> I got the thick ones, so right. you can get, you know. Well, that's, that's just, the thick ones are really good for, like, <laughs> Uh, no, yeah, that too, but I would Beer? imagine really more for like a, um, a smoothie yeah. or a, a, yeah, these a are margarita great. or Those something. Those are great for the smoothies, yeah, this Yeah, this is really yeah. great for smoothies. Give a good brain freeze. We've been trying to get Joe to get out there and get those smoothie places for yeah, us. Yeah. So, so for those of you that are uh, <laughs> out there listening right now, I mean, for restaurant owners, for schools, yep. for any, actually, any place that actually serves a beverage, they can really benefit from this. So if they wanted 100%. to order this, who do they call? And uh, and it's not Ghostbusters. Who do they call? And uh, or and or yeah. where do they go to order? So yeah, it's we have websites called GatorStraws.com, being an ex uh, Gator 
uh, oh boy. University of Florida. They just eliminated half the state. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, but we never had the University of Florida buying from us until it, we were Gator Straws. So now we do. Good but plan. Joe is our lead guy on these. He may, he's I'm the, the straw managing guy. director he's of straw our guy. straws, and uh, he's out there selling and. He's increased our business over the last few months, probably 60%. So do um, he's you done have to buy job. this um, by way of, by bulk, like for that, or can just like the everyday mom just go ahead and place an order? Uh, you can go on our website. We sell like a, uh, we don't sell them like onesie, twosies, but they're usually 2,000 straws per case. Okay. which isn't that bad. And then you can go on our website. We also, for restaurants, bars, we sell through one of the liquor distributors called Breakthrough right. Beverage. Yep. Mm -hmm. They sell Jack Daniels, all kinds of wine. Mm -hmm. So we call on them. They carry, um, you know, obviously a large quantity, so restaurants can buy from them. Um, they have really good pricing, or you can buy direct from us uh, right. from around so the country. So. Before you go, Dave, uh, let me tell you the <laughs> idea that Freddie had. Yeah. Well, actually, it was my idea. He stole it. <laughs> <laughs> He was thinking of going to like get a, a restaurant sponsor and doing a drinking a beer contest through a straw. Yeah. You know, because that gets you lit up quicker. Yeah. And, you know, these straws would be great for that. I'm in. Thick. I'll donate, I, I, what be, I, we'll donate whatever you need. Wouldn't that be well, great? you know what? I think we're going to have to dub these, yeah. okay, as the Six Borough Official Straw. Yes. So that's Beer a commitment story. from you to I'm hopefully in. become a sponsor here. Yeah. And we'll make that the six borough <laughs> official sponsor. Bring the beer. Yeah. Bring, bring the beer. beer. Yes. Bring the pizza. Bring Did anyone bring the cannolis? Yeah. Cannolis. Joe, where are they? Where are the cannolis? <laughs> Honestly. No pizza either, right? We got no pizza. No. no pizza. When are we so going to start? When are we going to start that? Because I don't, sure, I don't get a yeah. chance to eat before I come here. I'm oh, wait, but here's the story. So it's Friday. Beats in that. I beats. So here we are. We have the official straws. Right, for the six borough, yeah. and we could all stay nice and clean and, and sanitized. We could yeah. even put this on our salad, maybe. I don't know. Yes, you but, can. Um, put it on your, <laughs> your sushi to make sure nothing's wrong with it. Oh. <laughs> Or if you think your chicken is a little, food. if your chicken's a little raw, you throw can't, it on there. You can't yell at me, Freddy. Freddy, oh, you can't you yell at me. Can you actually put this on vegetables? 100%. Or clean just, your vegetables. You can clean your vegetables and your fruit with this. Yep. FDA so certified Freddy's usually over there with for like food contest. Hey, you're getting it. <laughs> Do they? Oh, man, spray the eyes. So if anyone has a question, by the way, we do have someone on the line. I hope you're still on. Trish, are you out there? I am. Thank How you so you? much for your patience. He wouldn't stop talking about the product. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Well, you want to you want you want to know something? I deal with him all day long. He yeah, does. Trish. Oh, oh, I know that I was voice. like, oh, who's that? <laughs> this is that the voice. money woman. She runs the money of our company. <laughs> Very important. <laughs> Thanks yes, for calling I in. So tell us what you why think. I am not there with you guys. <laughs> yeah, you should be. <laughs> I well, want to be there next time. I know. Next and time. she's going back up to the other five boroughs tomorrow. She's <laughs> going to New York. Oh, well, Vegas. I am. I'm originally right? from New York. What part? I'll be there tomorrow. I I'm from Long Island, Nassau County. Okay. It's not a borough, but we'll let you slip in. We'll let you slip in. It's not a borough. <laughs> <laughs> You're a little bit slip. It's not a borough. Come but no, you're I'll, still I'll a New Yorker. <laughs> yeah, I love I'll your last name. Yeah. Oh, oh wait. Good, good Italian. You see it. You see it. Yeah. It's Mariano, is that it? Wait a minute, I see it. Mariano, yes. Mariano, yeah, a like nice, it. nice Italian name. Yeah. Trish Mariano. Oh, I can see it. You're right, you Freddie. I'm not that blind. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on here. No, Trish, thank it. you for dialing oh, in. Yeah. Trish, good support. I like it. Thank you, guys. <laughs> thank oh, you, Trish. Come on, Dave. Yeah, pump you it guys. up. <laughs> bye bye. Thanks for calling in. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for sharing. We no, have, we've definitely. learned a lot. A good time. I mean, yeah, from education awesome. thank you. to sanitation to um, what else? Discombobulation. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and clean eyes. Mouthwash. <laughs> <laughs> so I wash. You got a question? Yes. Question. Okay. This is the new and improved way of advertising. Yes. Right? People coming out of yep. COVID and everything else. Yep. And price point for the community. Is this a better deal than anything? Right now. Totally. That, Everybody uses pen. Yeah, that pen is probably thirty cents. And you know what? You and can take your you phone and make, scan. Yeah, right? you scan. Yep, this you scan the websites. This is the bomb. And yeah, every it's incredible. Watch when you go to a restaurant. 
Watch what the waiter has. He never has a pen from the restaurant. He always has some other company. Some other company, and yeah. And you look at it, and it's like, and then we, our reps try to sell the guy pens. I mean, yeah. every one of your waiters has some other restaurant or company's pens. Yeah, and, get, and they should give it to the customer. Yeah. 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 You, you should have your own pen. Actually, yeah. how cool would it be to put the waiter has this, and then all of a sudden the waiter scans it, and it's the menu. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Incredible wow. idea. Joe, Patent, right there. Patent that. <laughs> yes. I just did. We're going to give her a commission on all those sales. <laughs> Sign her up. I, I can be creative. <laughs> Sign her yes, up. Yes, indeed. Well, yes. thank you again so no, much. I appreciate we're going to go to a thank break, you. but yes. you have to come back, and we're yeah, going totally. to certainly, hopefully, see more of you on the show. Hey, yeah. yeah. Freddie just did the straws. Going to do them again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh. So we're going to go and we have some trending topics we want to awesome. talk about. So yeah. Hang out with us and awesome. we're going to move on to our next yep. and chime in because some of the material we're going to cover right now is yep. pretty interesting stuff. All right. Can't wait. So, um, we, you know, there are some trending topics and some of the stuff this week we're going to be talking about. We're going to go like into a little break moment, but we do have to recognize um, here in the Six Borough, we have a conscience and we want to make sure that you all understand that there are parts of our community that have had really tragic impact this week not just I, mean, I should say our community but in our country and we have to make light and actually um, take a moment just to pause for the Texas elementary school shooting that took place and the number of children that were um, uh, taken and the two adults that were taken and I know that um, you know this is a really hard time for our country I and mean, it really is yeah I know the sixth borough feels really bad because we want to make sure that everyone understands that we're sending hugs and love out there right now from the sixth borough because to us family is critical in this particular show it's tough yeah and um it's really sad um you know i was just thinking over the part here of um the number of shootings that there have been it's just unbearable and unthinkable you know when we were younger the most that we ever prepared for in school were fire drills mm -hmm. let's go back even further nuclear bombs exactly uh threats i remember when Going i went under the desk when i went to school in westchester there were kids with pickup trucks with rifles in the back. Huh? They never, they never had a fight and went in and used their gun and shot somebody. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's it, just it, times are different. And and times are much different. And I didn't know this. The kids in our schools are actually doing shooting drills. I had no idea. I didn't know that. I either. didn't know that either. Um, you know, in some parts they do tornado drills. So I mean, there are many different ways. But this now um, we're gone to another level. This right. really hits home, and so. Uh, shout out and love and light over to um, those families that were impacted. Very, can I, very sad. Can I ask you a question? I'm sure, sure. you did your research yeah. on this. I'm sure you did. <laughs> Why is it like in the big cities like New York City, <laughs> Los Angeles, Chicago, you never hear of these shootings in the schools, and you would think that everybody's packing in those schools. You know, <laughs> that's why. That's, that's why. why. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they have the metal detectors, right? Oh, Is that why you have metal detectors? Oh, wow. But you know what? Everybody when you got a gun. <laughs> then they'd be they, carry, they carry a Glock. <laughs> yeah, nobody's no, no, nobody's gonna walk in there with a rifle because yeah. everybody be bad. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. Is that why? Is that the? Yeah, I know uh, you did you research know, it just, on it's, that. It's a, it's, it's, it's a tough. Discussion, period. But it is right. true. When you talk about the areas where shootings have taken place, they've been more in the remote country areas. But they know they can get away suburban, with Suburban, you know, so, um, yeah, listen, I, I, it's it's sad, but we want to make sure that we give you our, our condolences Definitely. and love and light shoot set your way from the Six Barrow radio show. And so um, the other thing um, that was really interesting that ties into this, and I just want to make sure I mention this because it's important, um, there was... Um, an act that, uh, when I say an act, uh, this, it was present, Senate was presented with something called the Domestic Terrorism Prevention Act, and it was blocked by the Senate. And what that really means is that this bill was to help coordinate all of the official agencies in communicating with each other if there is news or anything that comes out with respect to a possible threat. And we don't have that right now. It's just basic communications. So um, that's something that is really crazy and it's um it's called the hr8 bill so for those of you can please write to your congressman that that's very very important um to see we can indeed also the hr8 requiring a background check on all ages um simple simple stuff yeah um but crazy crazy it really is um th this guy that did this this kid he actually did commit a threat four years ago when he was a freshman and no one paid it he was sought with then but no one followed and paid attention to him Hence, he kept 
his promise because he said when he was a freshman that he was going to do this when he was a senior. So that goes to show that we need to have more communication with our agencies and someone needs to follow things like this. Right. And this is copycat stuff too. If you think about it, I mean, I think that's what also happens is that they just got the idea from someone else and so they want to follow through. And it, it's just the attention that would come with it. It's, it's just unbearable, it really is. But once again, we need to stay abreast. We are in Memorial Day weekend. This is a very yep. important weekend. Everyone is traveling. We have to make sure that we're recognizing our veterans, our government workers, and first responders. Um, this weekend in particular, thank you so much. We have to honor in our six borough for all of you that fall into that category. Definitely. Um, have to so, great today. weekend to celebrate. I know in the five boroughs, it's always a big weekend. The pools open up, everyone's going down the, the shore, fire going to the Hamptons, up. they're going somewhere. But fire here, what's that? Fire hydrants the open fire up. hydrants open in the middle of the street. Oh my God, remember those yes, days? They I still do. do that? I don't know. It might be a good thing for New <laughs> no, York at the rate it's going right now. Um, but I will say. Oh, you sound like the guy next door now. Yeah. <laughs> I do, I do. But but you listen, we're, the smart ones all came here. Yeah. I don't care what who what says True. whatever. They, they all came here. And for us down here, we're going to be experiencing. This is like the biggest travel expected weekend. Mm -hmm. I've Since seen it on the way COVID. here. Yeah, yeah like 39 million road travelers the will be out there. gas prices didn't bother anybody traveling. It did not. No. It, 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 they're, they're over it. They're just over Everybody's it. Everybody's just so glad going. to be able to get out. Yep. Yeah, totally. Yep. And, you know, if you're doing a barbecue, just be aware of what you're doing and don't put the house on fire. Spray the food with that first. Spray the, oh, yes, and make sure if you're barbecuing <laughs> that you're rinsing yes. everything off with the spray. <laughs> exactly. Um, you can actually rinse your dishes off with yeah. this, I'm sure, yeah. and everything else. And, and all your people. <laughs> So right. while you're traveling, uh, always, what I used to say to my daughter and still do, keep your head on a swivel. That's all you need to do. Just know mm -hmm. where, be aware of your surroundings. On top of that, we have the monkey virus. Good news. Two people got the monkey virus. <laughs> <laughs> a monkey and somebody else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just right. making a big pastiche over it. I know. In virus. the sixth barrel, yeah. the monkey virus, you know, when we're not... The CDC says it's not a threat, says no. that it's not a threat to us. But you know what? Um, if you have the smallpox vaccine, it, it prevents you from getting it at 85%, but it's just not pretty. It really is not. And so with that said, um, wash your hands. Just Purchase the, some uh, HOCL. Again, It'll knock it out. You've got to find out if that takes care of the monkey virus, this too. This is the monkey virus preventer as well. <laughs> right. So anyway, um, we're going to now go on to our next yep. guest. And we're going to have some fun, um, more fun with thank the, you, David. the product yes, here. Thank, thank you. you so much. Yes. Thank you so much. So who do we have next? We have an old friend of mine, Kenny Ruiz. Mag Chop Kenny. Come on in, brother. Come on down as, to the borough. As we're making the change, condolences to the, uh, the actor that we were. Oh, oh, God, I'm, yes. I'm getting there. I'm getting you there. Getting ahead she, of don't miss, she don't miss a beat. I, I thought we were going to do that between the chiefs. We have more changes. One more change. We have more changes more coming change. up. He's trying to rush me. <laughs> this, Kenny, this is not a rush. My friend Kenny has a lot going on. <clears throat> my, my, my own, does he have a lot going yes, on? Yes, he does. He has a lot, a lot of stuff going on. I keep myself on. pretty busy. You I mean, do. I've, known, I've known Kenny a while now, and um, he's always been a supporter of mine, and I've been there for him. But I mean, in the past couple of years, while I've been on vacation, you've really stepped up your game <laughs> thanks yeah, thanks <laughs> yeah and you know what i tell you every time you had an event um joe would put on these amazing events and i would show up and i went to every event and he would always say come on let's get you in the camera and you know how he helped me you helped me build the brand a Thank lot you. and get the note you know get the notoriety to be able to you know be able to do what and i did you've, while done, you're on you've done it man you've done it <laughs> so go ahead don't don't give me the look go ahead <laughs> 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 oh, goodness. We're not even married. <laughs> um, so, Kenny, a question. Are you from New York? No, I'm actually from Chicago. Oh. I'm a Chicago boy. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's not that's not within the parameters of the Sixth Borough. But you know what? But I live in South Florida. But you so live in you know. South Florida, he's in, so he's in the sixth borough. we can do a christening. We'll see what happens. Uh, he's in if the Sixth Borough. You're in I'm the here. Sixth Borough. Yeah. You are. You are. Um, but welcome to the show. Thank you. To the Sixth Borough. For anyone that wants to place a call in to Kenny after we talk a little bit more about what he's working on, it's 888-565-1470. And if you are tuning in live, Live, you can see us live streaming on Facebook, Power Up Radio TV. That's how you can see the whole show. Right now, if you're streaming live, you may just live. see me, but I want you to see everybody. It's um, So call into the show, and we're going to take a look at some of the material of what 
Mag Chop is all about. And I, I mean, he, artist, actor, right? Fashion designer. Fashion and, designer. Yeah. Swim week. Uh, that's swim week <clears throat> yes. as well. So, I mean, fully talented. Thank you. And I've seen some of your work. I love it. Are you appreciating the work that's behind us? I do. I, I actually love the artwork in this room. I was like, wow, I walked in here and I was thinking, man, I should have brought one so that you, you know, well, we have one here. Well, we welcome it. Bring one. Bring this one, is yeah. all my property. <laughs> but I did, I did bring something. I did bring What'd something. Bring? And, and it's for the, the Fifth Borough. So I have one of my products is called the Mag Chop 15-ounce collection. They're 15-ounce beer mugs, but they're microwave-safe, dishwasher-safe. And um, we got the perfect cleaning product. Yeah, for yeah, I got the and they and they they. This one here, <laughs> <laughs> this one here actually has some images from New York on it. And oh, I, thought, I love how it! How much better to bring one of that? Look at that. The piece is called Ready Awake. Oh, oh, I like that. It's a, a big of roll beer. of toilet paper roll money. I love that. <laughs> Look at that. There's a whole can of beer in here. You yeah, that? 15 ounces. He's a good artist, man. He's a really great so artist. So this is all your artwork. Yes. That was, I guess, what we call like pressed on. Um. Well, that was sublimated onto there, but okay. the artwork itself is collage art. So I do collage, collage art. So tell us how you do the art. This is the <coughs> cool part. And I'm it's sorry, it's funny. It's how it's how I got the name of the mag of my business, Mag Chop, is I chop up magazines to create the art. Wow, who <laughs> knew that? So yes. you chop up magazines yes. <laughs> to create the art. I love that. Yes. I love that. And they develop into these awesome pictures, paintings, yep. collages. And it was crazy how it all started was um, a friend of mine's, well, my wife's friend got engaged with this guy, and uh, he ended up being the founder of Guy Harvey. And so oh. he came to my house for dinner one day, and we're sitting around, and sitting there looking up, and, you know, I'm speaking to him, and he's looking beyond me. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking to myself, oh, God, there's a spider on my wall. You know what I mean? What's going on here? <laughs> so I turn around, and my art is there. And he's, you know. This guy is Guy says, Harvey? It was, it was the founder of Guy Harvey, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. His name is Steve Stock. And so uh, he was actually the guy who marketed the Marlins when they first opened. And yeah, it was really weird because I didn't know who he was. And, uh, and he's, you know, we're kind of talking. I had heard that he worked with Guy Harvey. That was all I knew. And so he says, where'd you get that? And I was like, that? Yeah, yeah. I was like, I made that. I made that. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like. Man, where are the rest of them? I want to see them all. Oh, wow. And so I kind of was like, well, what makes you think there's more? And he's like, because nobody does that just once. And um, <clears throat> so sure enough, uh, I took them around my house, you know, five cent tour. And I was like, well, there's one here. There's one there. The other ones were thrown, you know, off to the side after I was done. I was like, all right, I'm done with that one. And he says, you know, do you know who I am? Now, I'm from Chicago, so, you know, I, I was like, you know who I am? How long have you been in Florida? <laughs> I moved down here. In 93, the end of 93, November, and then I moved back to Chicago in 95. I stayed for two years. Oh, the first time was not enough. Well, yeah, I got shot at, and I was like, you know what? I don't get shot at in Florida. I'm going back to Florida. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> so, so, so I came back. I was like, I'm, I'm done. And, uh, <laughs> You're in the sixth barrel now. <laughs> yeah. Anything I got out goes. Of there. <laughs> I was like, no more. And so, you know, I came down here. Uh, my mom had lived here. You know, she moved down here. She moved us down here out of Chicago to get I me. Mean, I was getting in trouble in Chicago. I lived in I lived in Humboldt Park. My neighborhood you know, was on gangland twice. So, you know, I had a pretty rough upbringing. But were you already doing that? Yeah, I was doing some stupid stuff. Well, but. no, I meant were you already <laughs> cutting up magazines and creating art? No, no. Oh, just, this is like way later now. Yeah, I was. I I used to draw. Like I, I was a graffiti artist as well. So I used to draw. I used to do all kinds of stuff. When my mother passed away, I lost that ability. It was like it was like it was gone. I couldn't. And nothing looked right. Oh, interesting. And so I started creating the collages to try and maybe kick up some of the creativity to hopefully bring back my ability to draw. Right. And I started making them. I was making them. If, I, if my mm -hmm. wife and kids liked them, I would hang it up, frame it and hang it up. Sure. <laughs> and that's how I ended up, you know, getting started. That's he so helped creative. me get started. Wow. Well, I'm, I'm, this is a set of six that come as a collection. There's seven. There's, There's seven, seven in the collection. And then uh -huh. at the end of every year, one retires and a new design is introduced into wow. the collection. So if anyone wants to order these, where do they go? Magchop.com. It's M-A-G-C-H-O-P, Magchop. I love that. I'm looking at your sunglasses. Are they also? No, these sunglasses are actually a really good friend of mine. If you look at all my models for all my um, fashion shows, they're always rocking Moonray's glasses. I'm a very big fan of him. He's a really you great. You brought him guy. to the studio, didn't you? I did, yes. Yeah. You remember? I still have that picture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. On the motorcycle. Guy. Yes, yes. yes all right, yep. So that's why I have. So I rock Moonray's wherever I go. I mm -hmm. make sure I have my Moonray's. <laughs> I love it. So you also now, so you have your artwork, and you're also, um, you work with models and create events. Is, is that something that you do? Or you, no, tell I'm me a little part bit about of the that. events. You're part so of the events. Okay. <clears throat> what, up, what ended up happening is as I was, my company was starting to grow, the artwork was getting popular. I started having people ask me for these weird products, mm -hmm. and one of them happened to be 
a bathing suit. A friend oh, of mine was like, hey, listen, I want to buy my wife a bathing suit. <laughs> she loves your art. Right. So I went and I had, you know, I had a good friend. My friend Liliana was the owner of Palm Beach Swim Week. And so I went to her and I had, I had made, I went, I mean, I had to learn about sublimation, materials, fabrics. It was so like you a, started designing? Yeah. Bathing suits. Yeah. Because I was like, well, my friend wants to, I'm going to figure out how to do it. I told him I could do it. I was like a yes man. I was like, I would just say yes That's to Kenny. everything. <laughs> That's Kenny. And then I'd go figure it out later. Like, all right, mm -hmm. I'll figure it out. <laughs> This is great stuff. You're getting a compliment right now. So, heck yeah, I love this merchant. I guess this merchant stuff. Yeah, thank That's you. It's really great. <laughs> you can um, read that from there? Yeah, I have contacts in. I would I, have to I spray this stuff today. <laughs> yeah. It was a miracle. I should have brought my <laughs> glasses. <laughs> All right. So, um, I, 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 we're showing actually a lot of the work that you've been doing. And um, you actually are also right now in the midst of a movie. Yes, we finished well. so filming. You do acting. Yes. As well. Yes. Could you do what? What don't you do? Like, um, don't answer. Skydive. Okay. <laughs> Before you go any further, I got one question for you. Who f who told you first you should be an actor? Oh, <laughs> it was Mama Rubo. Oh, Yes, I went to this event and I was walking up and I'm looking for Joe because there was a long line and I was like, man, let me just find Joe because Joe's like, hey, come see me. Mm -hmm. And I'm walking and I'm walking past the line and Mama Rubo was standing by the um by the step and repeat. And she stops and she goes, who are you? And I was like, oh, I'm here to see Joe Rubo. She's like, you have a face for TV. <laughs> <laughs> and she took me the right in. Runs in the family. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of friends in the family. <laughs> and she dragged me right into Joe. And this was like, I think it was like the second. The like, second casting we had. Yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. And <laughs> That's <laughs> so amazing. Yeah. What, what, so what project are you working on right now? Which I think we're, we have it right up on the screen right so now. So right now we have the squad coming out. Should be uh, ready for November. We just had, we have one, um, trailer out and the next trailer's coming out uh we might be showing in puerto rico so we've got some things that are going on that are really big going on it's uh based on a true story it's actually about the first chicano police squad and um they what they were doing there was a lot of murders and kidnappings and in, uh, in the immigrant communities in houston okay so houston pd put together a chicano squad to go in there and say look we're not worried about your diplomatic status we're here to bust who's making your community bad so we can make the community safer and that's, that's what the, the story movie's line. about. Yes, yes. When is that coming out? I believe November. I got to talk to the director. I was supposed to call him before I got Juan? here, but, you know, Juan, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Juan. Shout out to Juan, the squad. So it's really good. We got some, it's an amazing uh, storyline. The, it was the biggest production I've ever been a part of. I mean, we had people falling off roofs. What was your role? I am Detective Lopez. So I'm the co-star with Juan. And is it in English? Yes, it is in English. Okay. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we have Robert Lasardo in it. We have Tyler Gallant. We have Mike Gassaway. And like ESG, legendary Houston rapper. We have Juan Gotti, another legendary Houston rapper. I mean, like the whole cast, it was really amazing because everybody's either really known in the industry or they're up and coming and they're doing really well. So it was a really good storyline. Yes. This is oh, fantastic. Yeah. So, everyone that's just tuning in, uh, we're sitting with Kenny Ruiz Magchop. And uh, we're, we're just fascinated by um, the work that he has here. This mug is just absolutely amazing. It's a collection and it changes every year. Uh, if anyone is interested in seeing more of his artwork, his clothing line, his designs, um, you would go to? Magchop.com. Magchop.com. And also the current project that he's working on called The Squad. Yes. Which is coming out in we November. Think November. Yeah, November. I think November. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming and Thank giving so this. Much. This is mine. You know that. <laughs> have, Joe, I think Joe have, has like three or four of them. them. <laughs> 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 I gave yeah. Joe one, and let me tell you, he supported me. He bought one. one. <laughs> so the next time you come on, you got to get another one. Next time you got to pay. <laughs> Only I get them free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> well, thank you so much. We're thank um, you for having thankful me. that you've been here. You're very talented. Thank you. And uh, please, by all means, if you have a piece of art, come back again. Come Bring back it. again. Yeah, yeah. We'll put it up and we'll talk about it because right. it's really great stuff. And I love to celebrate the artists and the creatives that we have in our communities. Awesome. Yeah, because you know, I, I it started off with all the artwork. The artwork took it to the bathing suits. The bathing suits took it to the leggings. Now I have a men's swim line coming out. I have a lot more. My daughter is now introduced as a new fashion designer she's only 15 years old and she did wow. her first show in december so i'm building mag chop to be a a bigger company that's going to have different facets i've done i've made book covers i've done movie posters i did the movie poster for boca to brooklyn brooklyn to boca oh yeah oh, okay. i designed that did oh, you wow. yes. know that yes i designed that so i've been able to do that i did the i've done movie posters for different people um the lady that i did the book cover for the lady that exposed the whole corruption in the uh, faa 
uh, I think for, I don't remember Carrie Carrie something. Um, but she I did her book cover. That's it was a very a, uh, important word in our book. I talk to you. Yeah. About, I got to talk to you about the book cover. Yeah, Corruption she um, yeah, she uh, C. right, right. I was in the New York Times for um, what my book cover was in the New York Times. Wow, because because <laughs> Donna and I were discussing design for a book. I didn't even I'd love to do it. Yeah, you're in. Yeah, you're in. Awesome. Well, thank you again so much. Um, thank we'll you. Definitely, please come back. Oh, absolutely. Anytime. It's an open floor. Anyone can come anytime. And if anyone has any calls that they want to make to find out more, it's eight 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 five six five fourteen. Come on's not calling. I don't know. Oh, Laura Wan's Juan, where are you? Juan, call in. All right. Well, thank you so much. We're going to move on <laughs> to a quick break. Again. All right. And we have some things to talk about, and we're going to move on right to our next guest. And, of course, we have in our galley the main headline for this evening, who's ready to come on in shortly. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes, we'll talk you to you later. Again, this was um, Kenny Magchop. Yes. And, My uh, man, Kenny. Yes. <laughs> thank uh, you, Very brother. talented. Thanks again. Thank you. All righty, then. Thanks, thank you, too. Thanks for coming on. So I know we have a lot to talk about still, and um, we're about to go into the second part of our show. Is very it time short. already? Almost. Ming. Almost, okay. yeah. Um, can you say that on here? Ming. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, we'll find out shortly. That's not, that's, that's okay. a, I could say that word, Ming, right? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. you know, so? I don't believe you. <laughs> um, so we do have. <laughs> you heard that? You keep that low, will you? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh. I said, oh, snit. <laughs> ah, was it me? <laughs> was it me? I'm I got rub- scared. I, I'm rubbing <laughs> off on you. Huh? Oh, snit. How do you say it? We got, through the, we got through the first hour. <laughs> we got it through the first hour. But, you know, we do have to pause for a minute here because we do have some things in you know, we have lost someone else that's really probably should be a headline within the six borough. Yes. And we have to um, give our condolences um, the, for the passing for uh, Ray Liotta, who left us way too young at 67. And did you know he was from Newark? Yes. I mean, although it's not a borough, but close, close enough. enough. Very talented. Very, enough. very talented actor. Yeah. Yeah. He was making a movie right in the yeah. middle of making Dangerous Waters. And so that just. And he's. Stop. He's one of the. You know, few that nobody ever had a bad thing to say about him. Yeah. Everybody, you know, tremendous respect for him and his ability. And it's sad. It's sad. It is know? sad. I mean, for the movies that he's made, for example, one of my favorites, Field of Dreams. And what was that movie with Kevin Cosner? He was in the Field of Dreams. I know. So what was, that was the your one favorite? line? One of. <laughs> I said one of. I said one of. Easy. Down, doggy, down. Um, one of the movies. Um, but what? what's the famous line? Anybody from... Build the dreams. Build it and they will come. That's it. Yeah. That's right. That was a great movie. Yep. I actually said it to my daughter when she was doing projects <laughs> in school. Uh, that's also, not what he's known his, for. Uh, well, no. <laughs> actually recorded, That's but that was early on what he was known right. for. And then, of course, Goodfellas. He was Henry Hill. Henry. And um, Henry, yeah. Um, a great role. Now, I have to, that was Goodfellas with Joe Pesci and De Niro. Right. But didn't you audition? Man, she... Where does she, she? How does she find out this stuff? <laughs> that was back in '88. Yes, I auditioned. It was it, it was called Wise Guy. Mm-hmm. At the time, it was off the book by Nicholas Pierre, and I actually read for Martin Scorsese. What was that like? I, I really didn't even know who he was. I was young, you know. But afterwards, I'm like, wow, the movie came out. That's what it was. But I read, I read for it. I read it for a couple of different parts. Mm-hmm. And um, did you read the right words? What? <laughs> did you read the right words? They didn't put it so far, so I was able to read it. <laughs> but uh, he was—he was a nice guy. M- Martin was a nice guy, very cool. And there was other people in the room who I'm sure were big stars. I don't know who they were, but how did you find that out? Did you talk to my mom about that? Uh, no, <laughs> we're good. Okay, well, we'll be back. Uh, one last movie that he was in was Hannibal, one of my favorites. But we'll be back. That's Tune in for the second half of the show. And we're going to be meeting up and talking with Club TV and Ciro DiPaggio from The Mob King. Hang in. Be, give us a break. We'll be right back at 7.04. Rest of the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Let's get your weekend started on Fridays with your one and only new host, Denise. 
bringing you ant, raw, and fun energy to entertain as you end your week to welcome your weekend. Denise will bring you friends, celebrities, entrepreneurs, topic experts, musicians, foodies, local events, news, and much more to educate, celebrate, motivate, relax, and relate. As she says, let's make your mess your message. So let's get this party started. Here's Denise. Hi, everyone, and we're back for the second part of our show. You were just listening to The Sixth Burrow, and we had some really interesting guests on. We had originally Dave Morrison, who is uh, introducing his product line, and that was through R&D promo and source, and then also Safety Works, which we were able to actually... Well, he did. I didn't. He he was eating, but did. yeah. Well, anyway, we are we actually have that. We have. We'll talk more about that in a minute. We're going to talk more about that. Uh, but we but we also had um, Mag Chop, Kenny Ruiz, that was here, right. and um, also shared the the beautiful mug that we have here. But you know, this is the second half of the show, and I'm going to say it again. The purpose of this show is really now to walk into the backstory of many different. Um, high profile celebrities, things that really are the comeback, or let's say the backstory of the back comeback story. So uh, we're going to be having some really good conversation, but this is like this next part of our show for the three that we're going to be having right now. It's like reunion. old school, and I Family think it's like reunion. a reunion. Yeah, absolutely. And um, if you want to call in, um, we're going to be monitoring the calls that are coming in. But for those of you that may have questions for Joe or questions well, at all, just for up. Joe, pop them up on the screen, and we'll answer them for you. And if you're watching us, again, you can see us live and get the better experience, and you can see the entire panel, and that would be at Power Up Radio What's TV. Up, on Facebook, and you can also hear us on 96.9, 95.3, and 1470 AM if you want to go ahead and place a call. At this point, we're asking that you refrain from calls and that you just go ahead and send a message through the Power Up Radio TV page. All right, then. So our next guest, go for it. Who do we have? We have the man, the myth, the legend, my boy, Dave Icovetti. Joey, thanks my for having My brother. Having my brother. <laughs> Thank that, you for being here. Thank you for having me. It's awesome. It's like old home week, and we got yeah. zero two. What double double trouble? <laughs> and then you broke out those pictures from what was that? Ninety three. Yeah, ninety six, ninety seven. Well, okay. Yeah, close. yeah. But um, it's amazing. We're here like almost thirty years later, uh, doing what we set out to do a long time ago, and we did it together for a while. Then we went our separate ways, and some of us took vacations and came back. <laughs> and uh, college, college. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and then we're you know back in the saddle again. You know, still doing our own projects, but also working together on on certain things. I've worked on a couple of Ciro's projects in mine. We have a partnership on Silent Partners about my dad and him and in Miami back in the day. And and Joey and I, did, you know, originated Club TV. We're bringing that back now. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna see if I can't steal him once in a while to be the one of the, the hosts steal. again. The, the thing <laughs> with us, the three of us is. Whether we're separate, whether we're working together, we always support each other's projects. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's it's like a big family. Right, right. Yeah, um, you know, I always say la familia. Right, that's exactly. where it comes down to. Careful. And what was that? <laughs> 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 yes. No, you you were actually tutoring me on on certain things. So, what is the difference between um, this is my friend or? No, I, I said these are friends of mine. Friends of mine. Yeah. Code. <laughs> in the borough it's a code yes it is but we are um, watch, watch tv you want <laughs> watch tv i know nothing <laughs> but friends of mine are okay <laughs> well we have a lot to talk about originally can you share where you were from originally well i was born in baltimore on the mason dixon line my dad's from brooklyn my mom's from georgia <laughs> So I can fry chicken and bake a mean lasagna <laughs> at the same time, you know. So I got it both going on. But I spent most of my life in Miami, Miami Beach, Fort Lauderdale, and uh, grew up with these guys. Hollandale, Johnny Depp, uh, you know, a lot of those guys that came out of Miami, we, we crossed yeah. paths with along the way. Um, so South Floridian. Mm -hmm. But my dad was hardcore. Uh, Brooklyn, his nickname with the boys up there was Davy Crockett because he was like the king of the wild frontier. He'd go to the islands, he'd go to Miami, he'd go to places that none of those guys <laughs> wanted to go to. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and then here I am uh, from Baltimore here. So a um, little bit of both. Got, got the north both. and south going on there. So when did you come down here to Miami? When I was six years old, we actually six. came to Miami. Yeah. Oh, you're a native. 
Yeah. You're truly a native. If you can survive South Florida for six months, you're a veteran. <laughs> I we, we, you grew up in, in uh, Miami in the crazy time. Yeah, you know. cocaine cowboy days. I was just coming yeah. back and forth for spring break then. Right, yeah. right. Miami Beach was, uh, well, Miami itself was murder capital of the world. It was on Time Magazine because we had all the cocaine cowboys, the Cuban drug dealers, the real Tony Montanas. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you know, I was lucky enough to work on Scarface as an extra, but they did a really good job of how, what really went on wow. uh, here in Miami during those times. Yeah. Well, what movies have you actually? Oh, well, just to recap, we know that um, you have your producer, correct? Writer, correct? Actor, correct? Um, other talents. Correct. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. He answered that properly. Yes, he's trained well. <laughs> check, 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 check. Check, right. check, yes. check. Yes, there it is. Okay. <laughs> Turn the hat backwards. He's getting in. He's getting in the groove. I feel it. Too funny. Um, so tell me about the project with the book, because I want to know a little bit more about that, and I, I'm very curious about it. Hopefully, I'll get a copy and read it, and you all can sign well, it. Well, there's two books. So, there's two books. Yeah. Okay. So what happened was Ciro came home from his uh, college days and um, started kicking butt, I mean, really out of nowhere. And uh, and he invited me to par par participate. And at the time, my mother was ill. I was taking care of her. I wasn't mm -hmm. able to, so I kind of missed out on Mob King in the beginning. But he did really well with that. And as a web series, just kept picking up millions of viewers. Year later, Joey comes home and, and easier. So, but um, he said to me with Mob King when he got that basically signed off with some people, he goes, "Hey, Dave, we need. I need another project. Let's do something about your father." So I wrote uh, the first book I wrote, which she has my copy that I brought. I brought to Mama, you. Mama Rubo. Mama there. Rubo grabbed it coming in. Yeah. Uh, May I? Oh, that's uh, the first book. That's the first book. That one. <laughs> yeah. His dad. Was Can you pass it over? Yeah. My mom and his dad were very good friends. You, you go into that backstory later. Yeah. <laughs> so that was about my father. That went to number one, actually, on Organized Crime Biographies, Kindle. And I'm not a writer per se. I didn't, you know, I mean, I studied a Miami-Dade film uh, and so forth, but not really literature. And it beat out Pablo Escobar's wow. uh, son wrote a biography the same time I did about my dad. And they were going neck and neck for a minute there and then i had it then he had it and then he took over so uh but it was for uh number one for a minute so it had a lot of response from people and then these guys from new york came they were connected with the actual good fellow guys from the real good fellas the real of tons of heist uh, at least their relatives were and they said dave we've got an idea for another project a fictional project and they actually hired me and partnered me to write this book oh. and it takes place here in boca and it's about a psychiatrist that goes insane, criminally insane, but no one knows but him. So he starts using all the so stuff. So is he really insane then? I mean, if he only knows, who, is he really insane? Then? Well, the stuff I mean, that he does, you can be the judge. And that's pretty uh, much what the book is about. So he starts, instead of all the good things he did as a young doctor, psychiatrist, now he does what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. So he takes over the underworld. He pisses off the mob. He's got the government after him. He's got some angry husbands after him. Um... And he just basically goes off the chain and takes over the underworld, so everyone's out to get him. So you had some interest uh, in a movie with that book too, right? You, that's yeah. how good of a book it is. You had some interest about it. Yeah, yeah, sure. This one actually, uh, uh, Larry Mazza has uh, an option on it, and he's talking with Martin Scorsese proteges and so forth out of New York about making that into a movie. Larry really liked it, and uh, and he's championing it right now. So we're waiting to see how that oh, goes. God bless. And uh, some of the guys that were involved in uh, the creation of Sopranos and also, um, I believe, Casino, Goodfellas, one of them, major players are looking at it as well. So he had me on his show, similar to what you guys are doing out in Los Angeles, and we talked about it. Uh, so that was my first fiction book. And, and oddly enough, that's a very adult-oriented book, but a good friend of mine's daughter's 13, and she had to go before the auditorium at junior high school here in Broward County and do a book review, and she picked that one, which blew me away <laughs> that she would even do Ooh. such an adult-oriented for junior high. Uh, and the whole faculty kind of flipped out, and they wanted to know if that was based on some real characters. 
Because it's fiction, but I did use real characters to... Names were changed. Yeah, names were changed. To protect the innocent? Yeah, and they said they're going to add it to the curriculum for... How interesting. Dr. Mench curriculum. Well, you know, this is the Sixth Barrow. It's only appropriate that they do that. Right? I agree. (laughs) I'm happy to be here. (laughs) Well, we actually are very happy that you are here. And um, I know that there is um, some very interesting things, and I have a question. Um, In all of your works that you've done, who would you say is the one person that was most impressionable? Yeah. Oh, Frank Sinatra, without a doubt. I mean, How you know, I know that? Uh, it was like meeting God when I was 14 years <laughs> old, you know. My father and him and Jilly Rizzo were partners in the Playboy Club in New York. My mom went there one time when I was a baby, and she said, yeah, some club where those girls wear those fairy, furry tails. I go, the, <laughs> Playboy, the Playboy Club. Club. <laughs> and how old are you at this time? Uh, I think that was right when I was born or right after I was born, somewhere in the 60s, the mid-60s. Oh, so you asked, what? No, but later in oh. life, she tells the story how oh. she went when I was a baby to the club or before I was born. Uh, but regardless, so he was partners with Sinatra and that, so they were very close for many years. And actually, Sinatra met my father looking for my mom. She had been with him out in Las Vegas. And she was, uh, and still is, a very beautiful lady. But she looked like Ava Gardner, so she attracted Frank Sinatra. Her first boyfriend before my dad was Frankie Carbo. And he was one of the biggest boxing uh, underworld uh, shot callers of the day back then. Is that right? Poor guy, he actually got arrested. He was being, the FBI was looking for him, and he had been hiding out. Heard my mother was at the horse track where she liked to go. <laughs> Went looking for her, and that's where they caught him. <laughs> got on his tail. And he, you ladies, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> get him more. Get him every time. Get him, get him, get him. <laughs> they know right where to go. But, yeah, but, so he met my dad, and... Um, and then later on, ironically, um, both of these guys uh, got to know my father. And yeah. uh, tell and tell quick quickly how how you met me, yes. and your dad, and my mom, and your dad. So your at one point, me and Cyril were doing really well with a television series that we were doing in nightclubs, based similar to Club TV. Uh, and uh, and my dad called me up and said, son, I need you to run a restaurant. So I go from being a producer and all these fancy, <laughs> you know, fruit platters and models and champagne to having to cook and run an actual restaurant. And wow. it was the family restaurant. I had always wanted it. So Cyril took on the production end, and I went to the restaurant business for four years of hell. <laughs> Down here in Florida. <laughs> Down here in Florida and Dania. Careful what you wish for, you just yeah. might get it. And That's I got a good it. restaurant, though. Yeah, it was a beautiful restaurant. It was actually pretty famous before it was mine. It was Roberto's, which was one of the boys' main oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. locations here. I mean, they had them all coming through there at different times. But anyway, when I took it over, we made it a crab house. We called it Crabby Seafood Cafe. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Herald sent some undercover reporters in there our first month open which killed us because they said the shrimp scampi was so good that they thought the waiter stole one of the shrimp on the way from the kitchen. And the next thing I know, we had a line outside the door, and we're just two months old, so we were like... Hey, we're ready for that. Right. Yeah, the shrimp stealer does it all the time. Yeah. So anyway, we ran into a little financial trouble, and my father said, listen, there's a kid going to come see you. No. He's going to give you some money. <laughs> because you make sure you give him every dime back when you say you are. And uh, Joey showed up, and we just hit it yeah, off right from the gate. we just became buddies right from there. I had oh, worked you, on, were the, you were the messenger? That was the oh. delivery guy. Yeah, his <laughs> uncle, Patsy, was in with my father in a um, yeah. federal facility. And uh, they were talking. I guess my dad said something, and then his uncle said, "Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have my nephew take him for money." <laughs> so, so we basically bounced back. The restaurant was doing doing well, and uh, about six months later, I went to Joey's restaurant and I gave him back the cash that he gave me. I was like, "Thank you so much." <laughs> and then we started uh, cruising TV. Yeah, and then not long after that, we started our own television series, which was Cruising TV. And, and what it was was Discovery Cruise Lines We had us on board every Friday night and would bring in different uh, Miami-type groups, erotic, exotic, you know, freestyle uh, groups. Days. Yeah. And then Joey also actually was one of the hosts, but then he went on to do his own spinoff, which was Cruising TV, uh, Cruising Gourmet, excuse me. And he'd be at different restaurants all over town in the kitchen. My specialty. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. The messenger. <laughs> I understand now. Yeah. I get it. But he had mm-hmm. starred in A Last American Virgin, so, you know, I was like, wow. And I'd been on Porky's, so yeah. it was like a no, bomb. Oh, that was the other I remember Porky's. That was a great we be- movie. Yeah. We became good friends really quick. Yeah? Yeah, it was, it was good. 
a lot of good times. Uh, what, what role did you play in court? I wasn't. Uh, I was an extra. An extra. So I it was counts. a student. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, uh, and on Scarface, I was an extra, but I got to be a fly on There's the wall. Two biggies. <laughs> yeah, and. Um, Lots of stories, a lot of fun. It was quite an experience. You know, for individuals that want to go down the path of acting, I mean, being an extra really starts the path, right? The Started beginning. Started for me, too. But at, all said and done with, you're still getting all that exposure and that experience. And to see such great talent at work, if it's really a, a movie that has some really top rated A names. Uh, uh, yeah. once, once you do a lead role or a speaking role, like extras out of the question, you don't want to do it again. Right. Yeah. Well, I understand. I would imagine it's, it's a it's level upgraded, of progression. Upgraded or, you know, in the credits. That's the only way. But mm -hmm. these guys have both always been front men. I like <laughs> to just be in the background. If I don't have to talk, if I don't have to be there. You're the one we need to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I do I like to observe. <laughs> <laughs> I do like to observe from a distance. But so Davis, that might be a bad thing. We, we um, did club TV like what, 2000, when did we bring that back? 2000 2009. Is, and it took off. We, we, when I tell you we were so close, it's not even funny. I mean, the things that were going on, Denver Nuggets football, uh, basketball players wanted to buy franchises of Club TV for Denver. Uh, stars were constantly on the show wanting to be there. We partnered with Dennis Rodman. We had one of the hottest nightclubs in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, on the, Riverfront the every lounge, Friday night, yeah. Voodoo Lounge and oh. Rodman's Rehab. So yeah. we were doing electro music <laughs> and hip hop music in the same spot. And um, what else happened? Oh, MTV came, had heard about what we were doing. Yeah. We were on ABC Miami late night, uh, doing good with the ratings. And uh, they sent one of their hosts when we were at a club hotel in West Palm to follow club TV around yeah. and we're shooting them, shooting us and they're shooting us, <laughs> yeah. shooting them. And I'm like, who would believe this? You know? And if that wasn't enough, a couple of weeks later, I come in and they're like, Dave, VH1 just called. They need a favor. <laughs> I'm like, what? Another favor. <laughs> Another, but now it's VH1, the only other competition to yeah. what we were doing. And uh, now you're right. bringing it back, right? And now we're bringing it back. Yeah. But now we're bringing it back as a 24 seven channel. Wow. So we'll be having all kinds of spinoffs, our own show. I mean, it's going to go, you know, you know, it's going to start off with loops like all, everybody does. You know, mm -hmm. all the major networks, even HBO started with, you know, they still do it, looping the same movies just in different times. But we've got 30 years of uh, footage Vintage to go back footage, on, yeah. all the way back to Chuck oh, Berry. We all, we all had nice heads of hair back then. Well, I'll yeah. tell you what, if it fits right into the sixth borough. Yeah. Perfect. Because, you know, we take it back in time. Yes. And um, that's nice. what we're we're doing here is bringing old OG stuff. Back I like table. it. I love your show. It's got a real good personality to it. I watched oh, thank the, you. the one last week. <laughs> yeah, it's no, getting, both of you, both very of good you guys. Feedback, yeah, you know? absolutely. But you just feel like you, you want to see what you guys are looking at next. Yeah, you know? Exactly. <laughs> well, if anyone wants to know more about your projects or how to get involved, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, just clubtv.me is, is okay. the, the, the website. It's on Facebook now, but that will be redirected to um, a 24-hour channel come Jan uh, June, July 1st. So, of this year. Yeah. How another, exciting. We another month away. And wow. I got, before you go, one last question. When are we doing the last association? Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so, there's a modern day type Godfather movie that we did. A little similar to... That's where those pictures King. are from. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, basically, we're, it's going to be uh, something that we had planned to do before um, the indictments all came down. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I many know that year, word. Many years ago. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, so we're going to bring that back too. But I, I'm looking to do that yeah. hopefully early All of next us in year. one movie? Absolutely. That'd be scary. Absolutely, yeah. 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 So can you imagine the three of us? And it's about a it's about a underworld. I got nothing. <laughs> it's, a, it's about an underworld war that is totally off the chains that takes place in South Florida, and it was going to take place in the nineties, but I think we're going to have to yeah, boost it, have up. To move it up. Yeah. <laughs> and we can't play the, the same parts the, we were going to play. The nineties were cool though. We can't base it on the nineties. Well, yeah. I mean, listen, that whole period in time has a yeah. lot of memories, um, and people can truly, our listeners um, and our audience. <laughs> get that point because that's who's listening right and watching right. us yeah. right now and what I was think the name the corotta the corotta brothers corotta brothers. 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 Yes. Brothers. 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 brothers yes corotta brothers yes
Italian skinny name, whatever. It was. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to find one There's that no wasn't PC here. That <laughs> already <laughs> taken. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I can't wait to get to get on film with a major role with this guy and yeah. this guy. It's going to be fun. We're going to really. Have fun. So we're going to um, first thank you for coming Absolutely. on and sharing and the exciting projects that you're working on. Uh, we want to make sure that we stay involved and in the loop. We have um, collaboration with um, the Wise Guy Show. Nice. Out of, um, no is it Newark? They're Newark, New Jersey, yeah. Right, well, actually, they air out of Franklin, they're, but out of Newark. They're, uh, so it's like a comedy uh, uh, radio show, and they, they're all... Uh, I've heard of them. Yeah. I've seen them on Facebook. They're Former gonna be firemen and stuff. They're hysterical. Nice. Yeah, they're going to uh, be collaborating with us. So they're actually dubbing us as the South version. The nice. Sixth Borough. And um, then Uncle Louie. We have Uncle Louie comedy show as well. You ever, ever well. see those guys? They're not Uncle Louie, no. Yeah, Uncle they'll be on board, stuff. and they're going to be part of our show, so any we're way, excited to that. Any way that I can help network, Club TV no, can network. No, man, you're always welcome here. Yeah. Let's do it. Always, yeah. Always, same with you guys on there. I was even thinking, we're going to be shooting on Hollywood Beach. Have you guys come do one of your episodes? Of course I'll be there. Right there on the band you, show. We've got to go on tour. we got to go on tour. Freddie's coming on that one. Freddie's going on tour. Tour. On tour. Thank you so much. Oh, yes, of course. Thank you. Pleasure to meet you. Uh, so I'm going to ask you to switch seats sure. so we can have Sierra right here. next to Get us. Out of here. Get <laughs> but the conversation is not over. We want you to stay with yes, us. Stay there. All right, I will. Yes. So we have a comment. Joey, baby, I'm here. What's up, guys? From Ralph Vitale. Hey, Ralphie. What's up? Is this live? Is this current? Yeah, this is current. No, this is last week. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's always Ralphie, a wise guy in the room. Oh, Ra sorry. Ralphie, <laughs> we Ralphie that. has a, 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 a podcast called um, Rock Rock and Roll Radio. Is that what it's called, Ralph? Don't kill me if I said it wrong. I've been on it twice. Ralph, give us, the the give the us a rock shop. The rock shop. The rock shop. And um, he's had Diane Franklin, who was oh, yeah. in Last American Version, and me. On the, <laughs> we were on the same time. And I also crashed it, crashed it once. He had Lawrence and Diana, and I crashed the show. They weren't too happy about that. Oh. But, but Ralph was. Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, thanks so much, thanks Seb, for um, giving us the comments. We love to have comments, and uh, you can ask us questions through the comments, but it makes us feel like you love us out there. We love you in the Six Boroughs, so please, by all means, give us some commentary. Um, one thing I want to mention, I, I, we have, we mentioned, you know, the... Ray Leo is passing, but also, did you know that Steve Tyler? I didn't know that he was 72 years old. Wow. He was 72. I thought he was older. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he looks it. Just went into rehab. Yes, yeah. that's right. Uh, at 72, he just went um, to rehab uh, once again for pain management issues that he was um, over addressing with medication. And um, I didn't notice, but he was born in New York City. Wow. So he is uh, a New Yorker through and through. We have to wish him some. Uh, Love out there and, and rehab and, and um, get it together, guy. You can do it. You can do this. Big Aerosmith fan as a kid. Yeah, yeah. He's that's another legend right there. Yeah. Another New Yorker. How much talent comes out of New York? So we have hey. we have with us someone I've been waiting to have on the show for the longest of time, Ciro DiPaggio. You are here finally. Thank you so much for coming Thank on. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. We it's really do awesome appreciate it. Yes. Um, we have so much that we want to talk about and um the, what oh, believe things? me she's ready with her little notes <laughs> fire away fire away <laughs> <laughs> uh, i i know she for come away from me hold on how do you know about that keep yeah. your heads up <laughs> keep it where i can see them <laughs> um zero you have done so much and you know one of the things that we've been talking about that's consistent is in this part of the show it's about the comeback Mm -hmm. Right, it's the reinventing, it's the coming back and overcoming, and all of you have done this. You know, you you start out one way, you you go to school, you come back, and then you have to redo everything or restart over right. again. And um, I know, Sierra, you've done this a few times, um, and I'm very impressed. I did I did a lot of reading, I did bio background, and um, I just want to hear a little bit more from you and where you are. Um, the biggest project you're working on, yes, is the Mob King. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm very curious to know, and I think our audience wants to know as well, where did that story come from? Well, I mean, the story is, it's, you know, it's basically from our imaginations, you know. We wrote it up, mm -hmm. you know, and created a story that would be interesting. But uh, I think what makes it different is in South Florida, you know, the, the lifestyle that we led and the people that we know we knew, you know, mm -hmm. and experienced when you go to put that to film, 
a lot of times people miss because they don't get the beats correct. You know, you right. watch it and you're like, oh, that's garbage or this or that. And I think what attracts people is that um, we get the beats right. And there's elements mm -hmm. that people haven't seen. You know, it's mm -hmm. not your, you know, your, your typical guys hanging on the corner talking mm -hmm. about better get my money type yeah. stuff. You know? <laughs> right, so right. It's a whole different spin, you know, that um, people have gravitated to. They thankfully like my character, you know, and, uh, you know, it's just, it just hit it off. You know, we did a little flashback scene with uh, Dave. I had Joe in the original. Uh, I wanted him in the, in the movie. So uh, I wanted him in the movie so bad I put him in the intro <laughs> from, <laughs> from the old days, <laughs> you know, because I, I'm the type of person that, uh, you know, I'm always loyal to the people that I've that have been there for me. You know, and what the I mean? Sixth Borough so, appreciates that yeah, quite so, a bit. That you know, that has been forgotten. <laughs> I think our millennials don't understand that. Yeah. That the the code. Yeah. Of, of that respect for sure. So you know. Sorry, um, millennials. So you know, I mean, I, I I put together a full feature. The movie's two hours long, mm -hmm. and uh, that's us trying to shorten it because you know most movies you want an hour and a half or whatever. But it's a it's a a true mob tale. It's got great actors. James Russo mm -hmm. is the lead. Uh, Plays the capo de tutti capi um, of the family, the Sasso crime family, and uh, you know he's been in Django Chain, Donnie Brasco, you know Public Enemy, so many movies. He's such right. a great actor. And you remember uh, we the got, movie with Farrah Fawcett? What was the name of yeah, that? Yeah, that was the was first great. one. Um, was, I can't remember the name. Burning of Bed? No, 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 no. She, 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 he breaks into her house and she puts him in yeah, the cage. Yeah, and then she puts him in the cage. So it was, oh, he was, I he was that, yeah, that was his first movie. Was, yeah, actually. it was great in that yeah. movie. So me and him became very good friends. So. He's actually going to be doing a casino robbery movie uh, out in Vegas that he's trying to bring me and my other partner, Anthony Caliendo, in mm. on that with him to mm. uh, be in that. So we'll see how that goes. But we also got, you know, Robert Lasardo, you know, a whole bunch of great people that are in this movie. So They just came on in February, right? Am I right? Th these new names that you're oh, this mentioning? Movie, the movie's complete. It's, mm. uh, it's in sound mix right now. It is, okay. Yeah, so in about four weeks, we're going to have a... Uh, final test screening with a select few people to let mm -hmm. them see so we can see the reactions of the new scenes that we added and stuff like that. And then it's going into distribution, hopefully to be in the theaters by September. Wow. This is a long awaited. Well, yeah, I mean, I did the movie pretty fast <laughs> on the well, grand actually, scheme of things. Think but, of it, yeah. but um, look, trying to make a movie um, when you're not anyone in Hollywood or anything mm -hmm. like that is like moving a house on your shoulders. It's, mm -hmm. it's damn near impossible to do. Of course, you can make short films or you can make little projects. You could do this and that, and everybody thinks, oh, I'll get distribution. All that. But it's so not like that. You know right. what I mean? You need to have real money behind it. You need to have real high quality production. You yeah. need to have very good acting. And then you need to have a story that works. And sure. all of those things have to work for it to even have a shot at getting out of the box. Right. So I'm just fortunate that I got a lot of good people. Um, George Jokciani is, is part of my team. He's an Emmy Award winner. That's the highest honor you can get when it comes to television. Uh, Anthony Carone, who brought all the people to me. You know, he's been in a thousand movies. You guys he's, know who yeah, he is. In a lot of movies. And, uh, you know, so I just have good people around me. I have great backers, you know, right. that believe in me. And, uh, and I come through for them. I, I produce, you know. So I know that for the movie you filmed uh, in Europe. No, no. In in Europe, that was a, a television deal that I had. Oh, it was. Okay. Yeah. Okay, my bad. Okay. Excuse me. Um, that was a television deal that I had. I still kind of have. I'm kind of putting it on hold because I feel like my options will be a lot better now. Here. Uh, here because okay. of the movie. Right. And, um, you know, so... It's there, but I don't. I'm not in no hurry to go back over there. I almost died when I was over there. Yes, and, and that's something <laughs> you know, that so. I know you've had a real bad health issue that yeah. you had to encounter and overcome. Yeah. Um, and a lot of us were right behind you, praying for your Thank healing you. and health. Yes. And again, that's a comeback because you were close. Yeah, it was bad. I had organ failure. I had uh, you know diverticulitis, uh, complicated diverticulitis. Had septic shock. It was a uh, it was a real rough thing. I lost seventy pounds. And this was all, all in Spain. Yeah, all a year and a half ago. So I put it all back. You know, thankfully my physique came back. And, uh, you know, I was able to get the movie on track. That's a miracle, the movie. I want you to know. that. that I, in my I, opinion, the way I had seen you, it was a miracle. Yeah, it was pretty bad. You yes, know, I'm I know. I'm surprised myself. They left me in a room for two days just to see if I would pass away or not. Wow. Yeah, I had blood poisoning. So. Wow. Well, that's a good care, yes. uh, health care system. Well, no, they had this, they, there was just nothing else could be done. It was either going to work or it wasn't going to work. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I had nothing to do with it. I mean, <clears throat> people always say, oh, you were strong, you were this, you were that. 
I it just no, happened? Yeah, it just happens. I, I just laid there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, not like I said, it's not like I said, hey, I'm going to be Rocky or something. I just, <laughs> you know, I was just, Sounds good. They wouldn't let me drink. They wouldn't let me eat. And, you know, they had this one nurse that would come in. He wouldn't tell me anything, you know. And uh, a couple well, of days later. Well, that didn't kill you. They wanted to kill you, it sounds like. Well, they, were, they had a drain in my back, you know, and it was spitting out all this dark wow uh, wow or whatever yeah so Goodness. Um, it was just crazy a crazy time so i'm in no hurry to go back there if i don't have to <laughs> I don't blame you. it's a crappy one, healthcare system one, yeah. me. What, a brilliant thing that you did was when you had that private screening which i, I came to yes. thank you for that and mm -hmm. i apologize i couldn't make it you, yeah. Ill. you gave out those cards those um yeah. That was a great idea, and yeah. I'm sure that's what it's made you put those other scenes in. Yeah. So, well, actually, one thing what, about him, sorry, he listens to your feedback. You know, he I have to say what that. He, yeah. People, what people ask. I think it's yeah. important, you know, that um, like a lot of people wonder how I have so many people that actually care about me on social media, and you know, for the most part, my haters are like in one hand, you mm -hmm. know, four or five guys, you know, that for whatever reason they do, but for the most part. You know, people support me. I think it's because you know I I engage with them, I share yeah. with them, I make them part of my life. You know, and what I'm doing, and to see the struggle, and hopefully to inspire people that listen, man. If somebody like me who who gets it from the dirt can come out and, and make things happen, then maybe you can too. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So that's how I do it. I just you know I don't I don't have no ego. You don't do you don't come from where I came for ni 19 years total time and. Uh, and come out with an ego, it's ridiculous, you know what I mean? Because, you know, I've, I spent a lot of time away from my kids. They suffered. Everybody who knew me suffered. So there's no, there's no uh, place for me to be like, oh, I'm great. Sure. There's, there's nothing great about me, you know? So uh, hopefully I make a good movie mm -hmm. that people like. I'm trying to reverse my legacy for my kids. Wonderful. So that they can be happy about their dad and what he did, as mm -hmm. opposed to what they used to hear. I personally, you know, whatever was blamed on me or whatever I had to go through, whatever they, it was all just part of a chapter, you know, and it was done. Just move on. Yep. You know, and I move on. Yeah. Yep. But, um, you know, and hopefully make good content. And I got a lot of good stuff coming out. Mm. I got a great pilot about his, roughly about his dad. It's not, his dad is in it, but mm -hmm. it's not about his dad. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about a, the insurance game that was going on at that time. Oh, that me and Dave insurance were insurance game. That me and Dave were intimately in, in knowledge of and involved in. So we kind of <laughs> turned that into, you know, into a, a, a pilot and it's really really good it was really good it's really yeah. good and it is based on the true story yeah. there's no doubt about it it's wow. called silent partners it's really good and um covid came you yeah. know obviously so again oh, we have a healing cure for that now yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> i thought it was monkey pox no the spray this, this? <laughs> I've, you I've missed, never I'm had it, so. No, you missed, you missed earlier. Anything you catch, this is the healing. Okay. When you guys watch everything. the show later, you'll see. <laughs> okay. You actually swallow this. Oh, my start. God. It's true. <laughs> watch, it's true. When you watch it later, you'll laugh. you say, I now yeah. I know what they were talking about. Too funny. So anyway, Silent Partners was done. We have people like Nick Valonga. At the time, he had just won the Academy Award. His dad was Tony Lip for Green Book. Right. He called me up and asked if he could be in Silent Partners. So to have somebody of that stature, right. especially at that moment when he won, was, was very humbling. You mm -hmm. know. And I put him in as, as a boss out of Chicago uh, in the show. And James Russo is in that as well and a bunch of other you know, good actors, D'Onofrio and a few other guys that are really good, Mike Marino. So, um, you know... Now that COVID is a little bit lowered down, you know, when you're, like I was going to say, when you're somebody who's not well known in entertainment circles in Hollywood, yep. they don't necessarily allow people to break through the ceiling. No, it's you a know? tight you circle. See, it's very, very tight, difficult yeah. to do. So to get someone to say, okay, um, I had an offer. I had a really good offer for Silent Partners. But the, the thing about it was is they just wanted to buy it. And then they were oh. going to scrap everything. They were just going to keep me as the lead. And one of the things that I like to do when I tell the actors that I tell them that I'm going to, if I gets picked up, I'm going to have you keep in the series. Yeah. So I'm thinking we spent a lot of money on this pilot and it's going to all go to waste. And then all of these guys that wanted this role and were hoping to count on it, it's just wasted because you wanted to do it. So mm -hmm. I left that alone at that time. I feel like now, especially with the movie coming out, it's getting a lot of good press. It's, it's a really good movie. Um, you know, it's got a lot of strong performances by a lot of people. Mike Villar's performance is, is great. Elizabeth Fantone, Selene Alva. They're just really good performances. Anthony Caliendo. So, um, you know, I feel like with that, coupled with the, a few other pilots and stuff that I've put together, I got a prison comedy that I put together. It's on Amazon right now. You can go to Amazon Prime, search Cyril DePazio or Suitcasing, and the prison comedy will come up. So, you know, I've done all of this in three and a half, four years. You know, I keep that, making That's incredible. Projects. I mean, 
three and a half, four years between health and everything that you just mentioned. Yeah, yeah. So you are a superhero. No, 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 no. No, but I mean, you know, I, I'm in the sixth borough, it's okay. <laughs> I'm just, it's I'm okay. just fortunate. I, you know, I have a couple of people who have really believed in me. You know, about ten people who have really believed in me, and that comes from people who put. I'm talking about put their money where their mouth is. Mm -hmm. Two, three people especially who have done it on a, a scale that's enabled me to get these projects done you know um, so the content is there now it's just a matter of putting it into the into the thing hopefully mob king pushes it over the top and then that'll allow me to open the doors for a lot of south florida actors who are friends and fabulous keep, that's yeah, great and people who Opportunity. are yeah and people who are good because i'm i i don't want to give a job to somebody who's famous i would love to work with leonardo mm -hmm. dicaprio that's my favorite actor you know, you so look I would do any. I would. There. I would love to be in a movie with him. But when it comes time for me to cast roles and stuff like that, I'm going to always defer if I can. If I become somebody to people who I've encountered, you know, sure. the ones that need to. Be that were there for you along the way. Yeah, well, yeah. the ones that need the work. Yeah. You know, I, I'm. I'm a firm believer that it's better for me to give somebody who needs the work than somebody who's already rich and famous. I yeah. Mean, what's the point? Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, we do. Uh, here's one of the posters that we see here from the mm. mob king but yeah. i know we also have a trailer um freddie do you think you can it's in yeah, it's embedded if you want. it's embedded into one of the emails okay uh we'll, we'll keep chatting um, did, did, did maverick come out tonight yeah it, comes it out came out tonight weekend. right yeah. i want to see that and that movie took three years to come out because yeah mm -hmm. oh that was one of my Went ahead. Things anybody. to do this weekend. Oh, you had that? I, I have that. I jumped on her. Oh. God, I can't take them anywhere. <laughs> She's like, runs a tight ship. Joseph's yeah. Joseph, Joseph, <laughs> sharp <laughs> cookie. Right? Uh -huh. yep. I cheated. I saw your notes. Yeah, hello. <laughs> um, one of the, the most impressive things that I think um, I, I, I want to really press upon is the ability to reinvent yourself. And, yeah. you know, if you think about it, you said you want to leave a legacy. Mm -hmm. And that, for me, is, is one of the things I'm trying to achieve as well. And I think it's a great aspiration. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you spend time in time, uh, doing time, you know, it's, it, you actually have enough, I think, whether it's that or whether it's going through a very deep depression or something that's very traumatic in your life, it causes you to really step back and reinvent yourself and reevaluate. Um, some people don't know any lessons, but... Uh, they have to go back and, you know, learn again. Uh, but for that part, though... You're looking at me for <laughs> <laughs> But you appreciate it a lot more the second time around. There you go. Second time's a charm. Is that what they say? <laughs> I don't know. Well, <laughs> while he's run up the truck, tell us about the oil. Talk yes, the I oil. wanted to... Okay. He's moving things along. Yes, I want to know about this oil. Here. And this one's mine because you signed it. I'm very excited about this. I signed this. them all. Don't feel you signed. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. Um, no, I just signed that one. Okay. But, <laughs> but I can't um, sign them all. So tell me where, how this came to me. So we have olive oil. Extra yeah. virgin olive oil. Okay. you got to tell me more about this. Well, um, we have uh, Caliendo Foods has... Uh, you know, the big cheese, Anthony Caliendo, has a, a huge food company. Mm -hmm. He's the main backer of my Mob King movie. And, uh, you know, he wanted to do a special off-label of his Caliendo oils. Mm -hmm. So we have the Mob King special editions. We have 12 different flavors. and uh, Yeah, we have, we have a whole bunch more than that that I brought there. But we have a whole bunch, period. But with the Mob King special editions we have. So I've already, we've sold literally thousands of bottles because I sign an autograph and I actually pack them for everybody who orders. So we've went through the first run already, you know, wow. and I do that every day, 10, 12, 15 orders. I pack them up, wrap them, send them out. And I think that, that the reason why I do that, obviously, is because if people are going to, you know, like, care enough to buy something that, I, that has my name on it, then I'm going to let them know that I care enough to sign it and package, package. it and send it. You know, yep. maybe a year from now or two years from now, I won't be able to do that, but I'm, I can do it now. I'm so sure you're doing do it, yeah, now. and they appreciate it. So, yeah, so I, I go ahead and made that happen where I can handle all those orders. So when they come into the warehouse, I go ahead and go pick up the papers and I and go. Sign all day. I go make them up with the mailing orders they put together for me right. and everything. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I, well, I we use a lot of so. olive oil in my household. And my house, of course. Too. I mean, listen, oh, yeah. the stuff is really good. <laughs> and the um, air, everything. <laughs> and they keep buying it. So it's, uh, you know, so it's really good. You can go to mobkingoliveoil.com. So there is one that is spicy that you Yeah, the me. chili pepper. People the put it pepper? on their eggs and stuff like that. You know, it's got a little spice to it. Which one is it? It's one of the chili pepper one. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Yeah, I brought it for a joke. And then there was... A little hot, <laughs> spicy food. Then He's there was um, chili peppers. There was so another movie called Chili. Pepper. Hot chili, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then there was yeah. then there was another one. Um, it was uh, fused with something. 
Oh, we got all flavor? type of yeah. infused flavors. We have apple balsamic. That's for, the for, one. Yeah, I heard that, that one was it's great. Yeah, yeah. and then we have you know lemon, olive mm-hmm. oil, garlic, Tucson, Fabulous. all that. You can see it all on the is website. Is it coming from Italy? I mean, where, yes, where is uh, it made? Yes, we we import from Spain and Italy, mm-hmm. and uh, we do all of our okay. bottling here in South Florida, and then we ship it out from here. Okay. So, but the main crux of the business is, uh, you know, selling thousand kilo totes. You know, this is just something that he did. You know, the retail side of it. It's not right. really where special he, edition. Yeah, it's not really what he does. You know, he does yeah. big bulk for right. you know big huge companies it's that a, it's make a, salad dressings it's a nice touch. and all this other kind of stuff. So. I like it. Yeah, I think he's got the trailer ready. Alrighty then. Oh, cool. Oh, you don't got it. You're going like this. It's in bed. You want to take the cap and open it and taste it? So I, I, I could send it to you right now, a link. If you yeah, yeah why don't you do that? Yeah. Well, I have Vimeo. Okay. It's Vimeo. Yeah, no, I don't have it on on that. Yeah, I have the clip on a Vimeo that I could send to you. Oh, thank you. you got a phone mine? Number for me to send it to? Yes. Where's mine? <laughs> I got one in the car. <laughs> no, you already gave me. Oh, you have it? But I can't download it. Oh. Well, I signed it on the one of those. I can just send it right to whatever you want me to send it to. Maybe you can do it from there. Well, um, while they're sending that, so. Or you can just hook it from my phone if you want to. If you could do that. Well, we're going to, um, as our listeners, you guys can go ahead and maybe figure it out. Um, if you go right to YouTube, you can actually download it that way, too. No, it's not on YouTube. Oh, sorry. It's on no. uh, Vimeo. Yeah, it's, you it's on your page, too, right? Yeah, it's just, this is just a pre-production trailer. It's not the official. Yeah. Trailer. Like I yeah. said, but it I is w- out there if anyone wants yeah, to see it. Yeah, it's on my it. page. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, on, on your page. Instagram or is it? On Facebook. On Facebook, yeah. and yeah. it's um, Ciro DiPaggio. Yeah, my Facebook is public, and um, my personal page, I have like a million, 50,000 followers, so mm-hmm. everybody can see whatever. Mm-hmm. I was lucky yeah. enough to be at that. You, you were invited, and you didn't go, what's the matter with you? <laughs> she, I was she sick. Got sick. I was, I was truly <laughs> sick. Right, truly. Yeah. But I, 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 I was good, except my seats. I was like this. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You are the front <laughs> row. Yeah. I was behind you. But, you know, the uh, the girl that I brought with me, uh, Cece, she loved it, too. It was, it was good. She like, kept holding, grabbing onto me and stuff. So when you were on, um, and I asked this question of Dave as well, who is the one person that you've met in your <clears throat> travels that mm. was a big influence for you? In what regard? Just um, life? In uh, well, let's <laughs> talk about the movies, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and the acting. So give me, give me that first. Um, I haven't really uh, been able to... To like meet heroes in the film industry yet, you know. So I wasn't fortunate like him to be on extras and stuff like that on the sets with these powerhouses like mm-hmm. Pacino and stuff like that. But I did get to have a conversation with DiCaprio uh, a year and a half ago and J Lo one time, one one point and stuff like that. But um, I'm really not a person that uh, gets enamored with you mm-hmm. know stardom and everything. Like if you if you know me, you know that I I don't really care so much about being an actor. Like I don't go on calls and I don't read for parts I don't do other people's projects it's whatever I create because I want to create projects so mm-hmm. I want to get to the point where I don't have to do any acting I'm just creating the projects right. you know so I'm trying to do my projects where I can get a deal that just produces for a network sure. you know like a streaming company like Hulu or something content, like that yeah. where I just make content with right. different actors right I mean um, I do it now because it works mm-hmm. for the projects that I've done but um it's not something that I'm hanging my hat on, you know. I don't want to yeah. do, you know, this forever acting and stuff like that. I, to me, it's like really boring. I hate standing around waiting. You know, <laughs> you gotta hurry stuff. up and wait. Yeah, <laughs> it's like Disney. Hurry up and wait. Yeah, I mean, it looks great, you know, when you finally get it done and you get to see everything. But it's just yeah. not me. That's not where my heart's at. My heart is in cre- taking an idea and creative. turning it into where you look at it and say, "Project." Right, you know what I mean? Right. So, did you think as a child you would ever be doing this? Well, yeah. I mean, me and Dave, when we were little kids, man, we were running around. Acting like we were making TV shows, you know? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Wow, it goes that far back that you, yeah. you saw the it was in you. Wow. Yeah. At 14, I had actually a fake news camera and would stand on Arthur Godfrey Road yeah. and with a flashlight for a hotel at night and people were like waving thinking they were, <laughs> they, they were on TV. <laughs> yeah, we were characters, man, you know? I mean, we were characters. And so. that's where it started. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, early, you know, I mean, I have obviously have a great admiration for his father, you mm-hmm. know? Um, he he opened a lot of doors for me and did a lot of things for me and a lot of his friends, you know. I'm not a person, ever since I've been doing this entertainment stuff, I'm not one that tries to clout chase. I don't ever say, oh, I knew this guy or that guy or this guy or that guy. The only, knew, the only reason why it ever came about, my relationship with Dave or his father for that matter, 
was because we decided to do a book. I never mentioned it before. It was right. never even brought up. But he's he's very humble. I mean, he's a, he's a very talented musician, singer, actor. Is that's is probably right? I forgot the he did the singing thing. That's but, <laughs> I mean, I mean, he. I would go to meet him at dinner, Another and that would be. Uh, and he you was know, singing. Stars that he's not mentioning right now. I mean, we had a whole night with a couple of them in limousines. Uh -oh. Steve Gutenberg for one of them. Oh, right right an oldie. Wow, Steve Gutenberg. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was hanging out with Brad Pitt before he was even known, and then Legend yeah. of right? Fall came out, and he just blew up. And yeah. Johnny Depp wow. was yeah. performing Johnny at Button Depp, South yeah. with his yeah. band. Yeah, yeah, we see him. Every Same night. time his band was performing. Well, he was from Hollywood. So. Hollandale. Uh, Hollandale. Hollandale. Well, he's from Miramar, actually. Miramar. But, oh, the Button West. South. But wow. he'd always be in yeah. Hollandale at the Button South. Yeah. Yeah. Music. yeah, with the Button South. So we've yeah. been going there since young teenagers, and, and uh, it's still there, crazy enough. It's still there. Yeah. It's a strip club now, it's but it's Cheetah, still right? the yeah. same building, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So those are really great names. Like yeah. some older names because this is where I'm we making, are. You guys we're are bringing making the, me we're feel it old back. now. Yeah, well, we're going we old school. Hey, this is old. <laughs> we're just aging wisely. We made wisely. it, though. We're <laughs> aging wisely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, <clears throat> what, you know, again, I am so grateful that y'all made it here because these are stories that I think entertain our viewers and listeners. And there's, there's depth here if you really, I mean, if you put yeah. everything else inside, you know, the levity and everything, but you have created depth. And I, and I can't say this enough. In this part of our show, it's about the comeback and the story of like just really trying to do what's right for you. Stick to your story, what's authentic to you, and that's what I'm gathering. I mean, if it feels good and you want to create it, go for it. Absolutely. Yeah. Just one answer that I want to add to this. The Ocean Manor was like a swanky place for the boys to hang out for many years. Except and the Kiki Bar. <laughs> yeah. The one in Fort Lauderdale? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> As if the you wouldn't know. <laughs> And I had the honor of hanging out with him there several times. Mm -hmm. But he had an associate talking about people that made an impression in your life. And this guy was a friend of my father's, Jerry Chili. Well, he was looking after him like he was his own son at that time. Sounds and I, like a movie. And I had a reputation of being a rogue character, to say the least. Uh, you know, my father was well-respected. I was... Maybe not. Uh, mm. So when they heard that me and him were in business together doing the TV show, I get a call to come to Ocean Manor, and Jerry Chili's in prison on the phone telling me, <laughs> that blonde kid is a friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care who your father is. He's a friend of mine, but I don't want to have to come back here. <laughs> yeah. That was the second most impressionable person. That, that was another message, yes. huh? Another message you received. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, oh, wow. he told him, you better not ask him for no money. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's all the call was for. <laughs> all I know is I was really shook up from that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was my base for a couple of years. I ran everything out of the Ocean Manor, yeah. you know, for everybody. All of them came through. They got their, mm -hmm. every, you know. That, that place has been around here a while, huh? I didn't yeah. know it's been there that long. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This was in I the 90s. It was just, Yeah. Well, Frank, we know Frank owns it. Uh, Frank yeah. wasn't the owner then. But now, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what he's He's been the owner now, I think, about. 12, 15 yeah, years, yeah. something like that. There was an owner lines. before him, and then it was the owner before him. Ah, yeah. Okay. It's still, for a while, it was the only place with a tiki bar on the beach. It still is. Yeah. yeah. There's no yeah. more? No, it's still there. It was great in the no, 90s. But we had a great time. There's other there. ones now. <laughs> yeah, we did. Oh, I don't know, but he still has that one there. Old Frank. Um, yeah, good old Frank. But, um, you know, I appreciate what you're saying with respect to sharing as much as you have. Um, there's so many stories that there are, people are listening, and, you know, these are the kind of stories that people want to hear because it's real and man, it's, it's local. I don't want you guys to go, man. <laughs> I know. I'm like, you can't go. We don't want you it's to great leave. Being here. I mean, he's it's being very humble too. I mean, some of the stories that I know of just you know blow him away. I mean, one time he had a large sum of money hidden somewhere, and he gets out, he gets it, he puts it in his trunk. He's driving, and he sees like a SWAT team with helicopters all. <laughs> All gathering in the circle across the way. And he goes, geez, I wonder what that's all about. <laughs> and the helicopter goes, Zoop, and they oh. all surround him, and they, they take his Ferrari. 980000 in cash. Oh, yeah. my God. Wow. Seized. Yeah. Seized. <laughs> so and then they got me again a week later with two hundred eighty, mm -hmm. and I had to change the way I was doing things. So I guess so. <laughs> So we have a lot of a lot of stories like, that okay, can this be told in film. <laughs> film. <laughs> it's gotta change the way we do things. I guess so. <laughs> but as far as storytelling, we've got a lot got to learn from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you're on set, I mean, it, you're doing some pretty serious stuff on on set. The theme of mm -hmm. the show. Uh, are there any moments where you just like everyone just breaks down and starts laughing? No, I mean my my sets um, are very laid back. You mm -hmm. know, I I don't I don't subscribe to the typical Hollywood stuff where you know. 
it's got to be all serious and you know when it comes time for action great you know but i just like to have everybody laid back everybody cool i you know i associate with the same people all the time because Mm -hmm. certain people are one way i like humble people i like people who appreciate things i like people who are going to give of themselves for, Mm -hmm. for stuff and vice versa because what i do is i'm not I'm not creating for me. I don't, like I said, I don't care what happens with me. It's mm-hmm. for me right now. It's all about building for my kids to be able to help my kids to be able to help my friends that deserve it. And that's it. I don't, I'm not uh, chasing the spotlight. I really don't care about it. If Mob King hits and it's a great movie and I make a lot of money, you more than likely will never see me on film again. I'll just mm-hmm. produce movies. You know what I mean? Right, because right. That's where I like to be at. Sure. Um, so that's what it, it boils down to as far as that goes. So, you sometimes know? the creative part is even more satisfying than the acting. Yeah, that, oh, I just, that's just what I like to do. Yeah. You know, right. that's what gets me going, you know. Well, your, your kids are beautiful. Little Thank Zero you. is amazing. Huh? It's my He's, life. Yeah, I tell you, we, we, you see, if you, anyone wants to see pictures of Zero and what he does, again, I know you're very active on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, Zero DiPaggio, you can follow him and see what he posts. and. You, you. I know for a fact that if anyone sends you a message, you reply. Yeah, I know that. For well, a fact. comments. I, I comments. don't really messenger. I get so many messages. Yeah. very. You know, you can't keep up with it. I mean, obviously, I have a million followers just on Facebook, and I get so many. I don't even like saying that because it sound you sound like a retard saying, "Oh, I get so many messages." But you know, it's just very hard to do that and at the same time be able to comment and everything else. So mm-hmm. I like to comment. If somebody's going to take the time to comment on my page, I want to respond to it. Right. And I, it's and like what like. you're doing, filing yeah. your own and signing. Yeah, so it's a lot of work, oil. but, you know, I wouldn't be anywhere in this business or be able to attain investors or anything like that if I didn't have a following. You know what I mean? Because right. then it would just, I would just be yeah, like... you got clout. You know, that's what makes people want right. to get involved. You know? How are you doing right. over there? Yeah, Listen. he's Learning. listening. <laughs> <laughs> So um, we are actually going to go to our close. Thank you so much for being here with Thank us. You, you are invited Appreciate anytime. It. I thought your lovely wife would show up here. I was really looking forward to seeing Lola, but perhaps next time. Okay. Definitely. Thank you so much, Dave, for being Thanks here. For I look to have Dave. Thank you as well for being here. And um, Dave, Dave. Mom, Mama, thank you so much for being here, Mama Rubo. Mama <laughs> thank you so Rubo. much. And and uh, we have we look forward to doing more shows like this. Hopefully, everyone enjoyed it. We want your feedback. And um, with that said, events for this weekend, we have a few things that are happening. So the Tom Cruise movie came out. Yes. Uh, things to do this weekend. We have the Air and Sea show down in Miami. Uh, it's Memorial Day weekend, so there are lots of different beach events that everyone can go to. And um, what are you going to do this weekend? Uh, oh. I'm lucky I got a date. I never get dates. Sleep, sleep, sleep. Yeah, I don't <laughs> sleep in anything. I'm just going to hang out. I'm just going to clean too. the house. I don't know. I mean, cook, make meatballs. I don't know. We'll do something. Uh, but with that said, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, we look forward you to hearing guys. you. Thank yes, you thank you so much for being here. Um, I hope you like the material, you like the show, and be a, a friend. Thank you, and Freddie. Be- Thanks for being in the borough with us. We're creating our own little system. We got our own straws now. Um, <laughs> we have our own cleaning sanitation section over here. And you know, if you're in a sanitation business, what that means in the borough. And so, uh, with that said, thank you so much, everyone, for listening. Have a great, great weekend. Be safe. Make good choices. Yeah, thank you. That was all. You have been listening live to the one and only Timeless Denise as she helps you bring in your weekend with a smile. If you wish to contact Denise and be on the show, call us at 866-224-5422 or email Denise at PoweredUpRadioTV.show and tell us how your business shapes up the weekend. Again, call us at 866-224-5422 and make your mess our message. Now that you are powered up, go get your weekend on. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were...